invited guests to um, Dunsparrow's family home. You had a somewhat tense, uh, you know, reasonably politically charged um, uh, meal. Um, after which uh, some of you discussed um, possible upcoming events. I wonder what possible upcoming events they talked about. <laughs> Uh, and you all ended the evening, or many of you, I think everyone in this Discord call right now, had ended their evening with a, uh, their own fade to black moment with their special someone. Nice. Cass did it. Me. Cass decidedly decided not to be a horny bard, remember? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I guess, to be fair, yeah, his was earlier. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, with that, um, you will all be, uh, actually not all of you, uh, two of you will be waking to the, uh, cold, gloomy, biting chill of the, um, uh, the, um, Dunsparrow's Manor, whereas... Wait a minute, Jasmine, did you fade to black with your former teacher? Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry. With my what? <laughs> what did you call it? Former teacher? Former teacher. It sounds weird, but yeah. Grandfather's Lost best friend. Mentor. Yeah, like... The power dynamic. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come in here. Seems like you've got taken advantage of I'm, I'm it. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come in here and just say, A, you know, elves live, live a long time, and uh, stutter, stutter, stutter. Stuff is weird. And then... <laughs> B, sorcerers don't really learn anything, so. <laughs> you know? It was. I okay, bots. Better be all of them. Mentor. You know, yeah. that, that, power dynamics are off here. <clears throat> or but before we jump Are they on? <laughs> They're on something. Uh, I just want to have switched out a spell in my ring before okay. I get rid of my spell slots or refresh them. That's it. Okay. Um, so we will actually start with uh, Sangara. Um, as you. Um, begin, uh, you know, uh, getting ready for the day. You are in kind of that uh, glow of this um, elemental chaos uh, beneath you that is the uh, burning hands. As you are still on that, like, carved peak uh, somewhere else. Um, is there anything that you... Uh, would like to do or interact with Solon or you would have uh, before uh, you are sent back to Barrowmore and the two of you part ways. Um, I will say that last night I casted extended mage armor on myself in preparation for today. Oh, oh yeah, I guess that would. That doubles it? Uh, yes. Mm. Extended as in more armor or extended as in more time? More time. So, you know, as a way of like. PC. Yeah, it's a little. All of those <laughs> spell slots as much as I can. That's cute. <laughs> the, tech. the technology. The magic. Um. Let's see. I guess before leaving, I will tell Solomor. Um, I don't know how to start conversations anymore. Um, 
before we part the ways again, I just wanted to say that you don't need to manipulate me or hide things from me. Okay, I'm you, you I'm here because I want to be. Um you've got me, okay? Uh, I kind of I I'd like to stand beside you at some point. But just not as someone that you control. And I just wanted to say that before, in case we don't see each other for a while. Give me a persuasion check. Persuasion. Come on, be persuasive. 21! Nice. Okay. Um, with that, um, you see this look of almost like disbelief on his face. Um, followed by like what looks like uh, for the longest time you, you've never really seen anything but like a really somber and brooding expression. But there looks like genuine um, like uh, joy and excitement in his face right now as uh, a smile kind of like creeps to the edges of his lips. Um, he looks at you and says, I know there's a lot going on right now, but I think you do deserve some answers. When you're ready for them, uh, he reaches into um, his coat and pulls out this, uh, like, clockwork, uh, like, it looks like a brass, the only way I can describe it is like a brass snowflake, like this disc, with just like beautiful uh, geometric patterns that are all uh, symmetrical, going through and through, uh, and as you grab it, you notice there's almost like gyroscopes within gyroscopes in this thing, and he says, when you're ready, the key to my workshop, come visit me and I'll you everything. I don't I don't know why I wanna like play it cool like it's not a big deal. <laughs> but it's kind of a big deal to her. <laughs> As he hands it to you he says um, if you do come and visit it's not it's not a requirement, but I would prefer it if you came alone. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see each other. Uh, uh, before you finish your sentence, he's going to kind of like grab you by the waist and pull you in. Wait, I don't... Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay. Um, after the two of you share a moment, um, uh, without a word, um, he's going to kind of gently pull away, and then you watch as he goes over to um, what looks like almost like a, a, a stone-carved vanity. Uh, you watch as he... Uh, has what looks like a uh, both like a almost like a welder's mask but it's got like clockwork like and carved like runes and things on it with one thing that almost looks like a, a built-in um, like eye socket and he's got two like very heavy duty gloves you watch as he goes he puts on the mask puts on both gloves kind of pulls up a hood and then reaches his hands up and you watch as there's this um, like golden like reverberation at the uh, above and below his hand and there's a little bit of dust that falls as some unseen uh, clockwork device within this mountain just begins to whir and a teleportation sigil is now projected onto the floor of this chasm from a device up top Um, and as is it is, that, he kind of 
Go oh, ahead. sorry. No, go ahead. Um, no, what questions did you have? Is that the sigil back to Barrowmore Manor? It is. Oh, okay. That was it. Um, and he uh, turns to you, and uh, you hear his voice kind of, uh, at this point, like, projected and uh, reverberated as you, you know, have for so many times when he's in, like, work mode. Um, as he just says, until next time. Until next time. And I will step into the teleportation. Okay. As you do, before you even get to the center, you just feel your whole body become weightless. And almost like you're going to start shooting up, like you're getting sucked up into a spaceship. And then uh, before you hit anything, you just kind of... It's this weird thing where gravity almost instantly changes directions, and you almost kind of like stumble a little bit as you just snap into uh, Barrowmore. Still with that's... the uh, the key in your hand. I think that might be what Varric means when he says the teleportation is yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to. It's morning, right? Like early morning. It's, it's, yeah. It's about. It was hard to tell back in uh, Burning Hands because it was all kind of just like fire. lava lamp. <laughs> um, here, um, there's a like biting crisp of morning air. You you by the look outside, you think it's maybe like six or so a.m. You do have a very hearty smell of breakfast sausage and coffee right now, and you you uh, kind of hear that like in the distance, kind of like low uh, uh, voices having uh, a conversation. Conversation where breakfast sounds like it's coming from or somewhere else? Yes. I'm heading there. I'm not sneaking, but I'm not being obvious. I want to see if I can catch some pieces of that conversation on Aqua. Sure. Um, as you kind of uh, creep up, you notice this is in a different, th there's multiple dining areas. Um, you notice one of them is almost more of like a, uh, like an open bar, uh, that you had not seen before. Um, and this is where that leads you. Um, you hear the low and now familiar voice to you of Cobb, um, the second voice is also familiar, just one that you had not heard in a little bit of time. Um, as it just goes, ah, uh, yes, uh, a, a little bit of more, please. Yes, uh, that's the <laughs> uh, uh, couple drops and it stops the shakes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All of this alcohol. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll in just be like, is that auto new guy here? Uh, is that Lady Sundara, the Valendry elf princess that I hear? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was a lot of extra bits on that name <laughs> that were not quite necessary. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, well, uh, when I watched uh, some of your group uh, come back while being invisible, uh, I memorized the sigil. And I thought I might come through and see what you were all getting up to. Yep. Yes, that is... I get it. I would do that too. Alright, yeah, and, we're up uh, to hanging out here. I've brought a little bit of trouble with me. And he kind of uh, looks over um, and um, uh, kind of walking in pace uh, with each other. You see both um, uh, Reyna and Alara. Uh -oh. Well, it's actually pretty good that you brought some trouble with you. There might be some trouble finding us. Maybe. We'll see. Very good. Uh, oh, and uh, Reyna, I, I brought that solvent to uh, that helps with the blood on the sword. So, it seems that... Uh, 
timing is perfect. I thought you were gonna say my daughter was here. <laughs> I was about to be livid. You just missed a really nice dinner, Otto Luke. Well, a very delicious dinner with a lot of awkward conversation. I attempted to scry on you, <laughs> multiple members of your troop. All right, um, that's. As I remember that I had explicit permission to do so at any time. I don't think we've ever said that. And I just want you to know, I didn't see anything. Okay, that's... It appears this area is warded. Okay. From <laughs> drying eyes. And if anyone were to leave this area to, through some means or other with you know, old members of the Savage Seven, I also wouldn't have seen anything of that nature either. Because surely Solinor would ward his own sorcerers and towers and places against scrying, because that's what I would do, or any sensible wizard would do. So I've, obviously Yeah, I I've done that too. Yeah. Nothing. And it feels like such a deep invasion of privacy that I'm going to pretend that we have never talked about this. Like I said, I even if I wanted to, uh, it's just the way that the magic works. It it uh, it doesn't in this case. So. Okay. Anyway, uh, where's have you seen Cass and Eric? Thank you. in on your safety. While you all are sleeping, traveling oh. in the wastes. I need to wear clothes at all times. I hate this. Otto Luke, don't ever scry on me again. You have no permission. There's no express permission to scry on me unless I say so. But what if bandits attack in the dead of night? I'll send you a message and say, hey, can you scry on me? Or I'll kill the bandits myself and I'll be fine. You would be quite dead. Bandits can be very quiet. You know what else can be very quiet? Fireball. We're fine. It's fine. Very well. I will only scry on everyone else in your troop. Except for you. You know, you can also just send a message and say, Hey, are you okay? Is it okay if I look in on you? Yes, but... Then if you say no, and I don't check on you... Okay. Calamity. Okay. I see. Alright. Yep. Nope. This never happened. Anyway, have you seen Cass and Varric? I would like to talk to someone who didn't stare at me in the middle of the night. Like I said, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can say... Uh, Mr. Cornman, uh... Perhaps more of this uh, breakfast sausage is in order, and uh, perha perhaps these aromas will awake the rest of our troop. Uh, you you watch as Cobb is looking like very amused by this old man, uh, and uh, you watch as he like takes a little flask, like kind of unscrews it just with his thumb, and just like. Puts a little few more drops in his coffee and just goes, Ah, that's a good man. Uh, he turns and goes over to the kitchen. He watches uh, Reyna and Alara both uh, sit down uh, kind of next to each other um, with plates of food that are there. Um, and then one is brought for you as well, Sandara. Um, at this point, the rest of you would be um, uh, getting these uh, aromas uh, in your room as well. Um, so, uh, if anyone would like to have a moment before you join the rest of the crew, let me know. Otherwise, um, we can begin to, uh, to have our meeting. I would like a moment or two. Yeah, I think you need one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I assume we're in the same bed. Yep. Uh, I'll roll over to see her. Mm-hmm. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, pretty uh, a good night you had last night at the 
party? Yeah, I've, you know, I've had better. Yeah. Um, got any plans for the rest of the day? Uh, you notice she gets this kind of like, almost, um, like, brief, exasperated look. Like, like, there's a lot to do. And she's clearly overwhelmed. So you get the sense that it was nice to, like, be out of reality for a bit, and now they're just kind of like the waves of reality crashing back down. I put a hand, like, over and around, and just kind of pull her close. And yeah. Just five more minutes. She just... kind of, like, tucks her head in your chest and gets, like, you kind of feel her shoulders relax. Um, she goes, yeah, um... There's a lot going on in New Callum, and meeting the Duchess for myself has not alleviated any of our concerns. And with Reyna being going AWOL, it has left a majority of the management of both the Sea of Swords and the uh, remnants of the Hall of Vigilance. Both of those are falling on my shoulders, all while trying to uh, raise a nine-year-old. So it's a lot. It would... Uh, what can I do to help? She looks at you and says, what would help is for you to find a way to come home. Okay. And I've been thinking about this, um, and obviously whatever happens in the moment is going to happen, but When you when you face him, are you planning on killing him? If you had asked me this question, a week ago. Just said absolutely. But I'm not sure if that's my place. She like tucks her head kinda deeper on you and puts her hand on your chest and just says Well I will think lesser of you no matter what you do. But the more when I left, the more I the more I thought about it, I felt like maybe the drinking wasn't the biggest problem. And that maybe it wasn't your true addiction. And just worried that facing a man like this might bring back the other guy in you. So whatever you decide and whatever you do, I want you to come back the same. I want you to come back my husband. Tasha's father. So that's what you can do. I can handle everything else.
kiss on the forehead. Have us some breakfast. That sounds good. Maybe we can do that before the lady of the house graces us with her presence and I can slip out. You're telling me. Um, I'll meet you out there. Yeah, she's like almost immediately ready. She's actually just like, um, there's uh, some clothes here that are like perfectly all like Goliath sized for you. She's just kind of like rummaging through the uh, closet and she just got like this like barrack oversized like basically like knitted kind of like a t-shirt but it's just got like almost like a v-neck with like knitted um, parts up top um, that kind of connect the, the V and she's just like wearing a bunch of like baggy giant goliath clothes uh, and she just goes hunting for breakfast I'm gonna take a second to myself actually a few minutes and I will be putting my armor back on um, seeing Sarah and the like vibe of last night uh, Varric's just a little concerned unsure why but after his armor's on uh, he'll be coming out to join everyone for breakfast where you kind of already alluded to it but I'm gonna try to get a little bit more from you here where is your head at in terms of like the significance of you putting on your armor it's Varric's um, really torn at the moment between his need for revenge and his desire to leave everything and just go be a father. The reason he put the armor on is because he realized that every second that he's with the remnants and they're on this mission to, you know, collect all the pieces and potentially kill all these very powerful people, that he's, like, in imminent danger all the time even in this fancy house that they say no one would attack because of like political yada yada that very understands that that doesn't matter and very also understands the potential threat that the remnants actually are to these powerful people because of things they've done. He doesn't want to die. Okay. Um, He's afraid to die. Got it. Um, so as you uh, don the armor, um, you turn and your eyes fall on the massive uh, you did bring the trident right no oh you did not you left it no, it's on the boat okay I have my hammer okay very good um, so with that um, Varric you'll make your way out uh, Cass anything before you uh, confer with the group Cass's room is him fully dressed 
uh, gun unholstered by his side, lying on his bed, just staring at the ceiling. Uh, he's been awake for like an hour now, probably, and is just not yeah. wanting to come down. Uh, he takes a deep breath and gathers all of his shit and uh, just goes down to breakfast. Okay. Uh, Cass, you would be the first one. Um, first one down. Uh, and how, how dapper are we this morning? Pajamas. I'm in, okay. I'm in full comfy clothes right now. Now, pajamas for Cass, can I ask? I'm just curious as a, as both a, you know, you know, as, as a fan of the show and also a participant. <laughs> Um, now, I'm curious because I, I wonder if pajamas for Cass is still just like elegant, like dress pants that are from like the night before, with just like an undershirt and probably like, nothing else, and that's pajamas. Or are we talking it's, like it's, actually you took the time uh, to get into comfy clothes? Well, I ch I changed my shift weight. I probably need to wash these things because I never take them off. And just you know, change it. Too. <laughs> like a magic. Anytime you change it, it comes with a press with dis cool. So you don't even need a shower or anything below the neck. Cool. If we're being if we're being fair. Um, no, he he's got like a, um, he's got definitely a very loose silk shirt on, and uh, uh, yeah, shirt. We'll go with like comfy, comfy, almost dress pants. Uh, fab leisure. Um, okay. So with that, the um, thread count though, off the charts. Yes, yeah, no, you, you wouldn't tell by looking at it, but uh, you'll touch it and be like, oh, you aren't scrubs. Uh, <laughs> so with that, um, Cass, uh, you make your way towards the aroma of breakfast, where you are melt met by a very hearty. Oh, yes, yes, my oh. <laughs> Please come, come join us. Oh, it's always um, a pleasure when it's a surprise to hear your voice, Otto Luke. I oh, although I shouldn't surprised, be surprised, but I'm still able to surprise you, and overjoyed that I always am. Would you care for a a gentle toke from the pipe? Um, your colleague, the corn man. An excellent selection of leaf. I'm surprised I haven't thought of that yet. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. It's gonna be a day. I'm not gonna join the smoke circle. Uh, do we got? Uh, I smelled sausages. Do we got those sausages yet? Ah uh, yes. Uh, your friend seems to be occupied, so I'll just uh, I'll serve you myself. And you watch as he like picks up his plate, and you watch as he like waves his hands like dimension door, <laughs> and then just like goes <coughs> into the kitchen, and you hear like rattling and breaking of dishes. Am I down there already with Cass? Uh, you're already down there. Okay. Um, so, Cass, uh, after a brief moment, you are brought a steaming plate of breakfast. Uh, you notice uh, Reyna and Alara are there as well. Uh, currently, they're sitting off to the side, kind of having um, uh, what looks like a, a uh, in-depth conversation in kind of low voices. Oh, good morning. Sorry to uh, <coughs> just drop the bomb first thing in the morning. Uh, when are we telling Eric? about the closet talk last night. Is my wife down here at this moment? Uh, right at this moment, um, right after you say that, um, Sarah kind of peeks around the corner. Um, <clears throat> oversized t-shirt, uh, baggy pants rolled up to her knees. And she just goes, hey everybody, hope uh, it's no problem if I uh, stay for breakfast. Coffee. Lots of coffee. 
No, of yeah. course. I like your pants. So comfortable. Thank you. Yes, they are. Should get some of those. He looks around. She's like, I don't, you know, I don't know what the policy is here on what these is. I know they're not Varys, but I'm keeping them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whoever owns it can afford to lose it. I mean, they're barrack sized, and I don't know how many of them you see walking around. Speaking of Varric, uh, where's he at? Oh, he does this thing sometimes where he's like, I'll meet you out there. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. How's, uh, how's your night? <laughs> Use this to think for a little. You know, it got it got late, and I I think I had, uh, you know, the expensive wine. I couldn't say no to, and then I think it it hit me in uh, in the moogs a little harder than uh, I think we were expecting. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. So I just decided uh, to just kind of crash here for the night. If that's okay. Sorry if anyone's surprised. <laughs> I didn't realize where she was going with that. But then at the end when she says that's kind of, she circled back to she crashed there for that. I was like, oh, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, <laughs> your, your, um, your little friend's really fun. Oh, some, yeah. Some of these wild. Which is weird because you don't get that impression at first at all. Oh, I did. I did. Oh. No, no okay. one's party. No one's... I... Yeah, you gotta be careful with them. Yeah. Um... This movie is literally the only gnome I've... First gnome I ever met, and absolutely insane. Yeah, I mean, at the... I'll tell you this, at the risk of uh, generalizing, they're all like that. You know? Just, uh, yeah. they just know how to have a good time. But then you know when it when it hits the fan, they're 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 the ones that you want to have your back. Oh yeah. Party hard, work hard. But Goliaths too, like yeah, hard you guys are pretty, pretty cool. We 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 can be. I actually, most of the people that I've ever truly hated have been Goliaths. Ah. <laughs> she says that as she sits down, like <laughs> casually drops that. Okay. Wow. I think Autoloop is coming with some food. I oh, could use some food. Um, yeah. Sundara, Solinor? Uh, is she? Uh. Yeah. What? Okay. A, what? A, what about him? What's up? That's it. It was. She like is blushing furiously. Just... That's. <laughs> Not the information he was going for, but that's all he needs to know. <laughs> With that, you watch as Sarah is like staring into your soul right now. Uh, I don't understand what's going on right now. Uh, Sarah puts her hand on you, Cass, to like lift herself up almost. Sandra, she grabs you by the arm. Um, she reaches behind the counter and grabs what looks like a little uh, like bottle of whiskey from behind the counter and she like pulls you over to a side table and on the way there she goes oh hey Raina hello and she like <laughs> you down and like puts the whiskey bottle in front of you and then just like pops her head like that in front of you ah uh... Sorry, I'm gonna... I didn't mean to ask. You are welcome to this too, but I feel like this needs to happen. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I, it seemed like you kind of had a thing going on. I... What are we doing? I didn't mean to exclude you from it, but we're going to let, uh, yeah. Sundar's got some stuff to share. I'm, I'm just going to take a I big up next swig to... of the bottle. Just deep. Deep swig. Um... Yeah, so he kind of said that he loves me, and then we spent the night together, and it was cool, and it was great, and he gave me the key to his workshop, and... Yeah. And I, I'm happy about that. Very happy about that. I don't, I don't know who this person is, 
but they seem really intense. That is probably an understatement. Um, but that's great. He has a workshop. So, you know, a, a working man that shows some kind of character, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been known to do some work uh, around the island. <laughs> Um, he, so the workshop is probably like, it's one of the most important things to him, I would presume. He does a lot of very secretive, intricate work. So, I feel like it's kind of a big deal to give me the key to it, you know? Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. And, yeah. We've, I've kind of been contemplating what that means for like the future and stuff, which what is What I would say is don't let lot. that drive you crazy, because he's probably thinking a lot of the same stuff. Don't contact him. Okay? He should be reaching out to you. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. And if it's too fast, then that probably means he's desperate, which is a bit of a red flag. Okay, so what I'm wants. thinking... So when you say like too fast, are you saying like, like a couple of years? Like it'd no, be... no, no. Oh, what? What? I'm confused. Um, the time is different. Oh, is this a? Is this a? Ah, I got it. Okay. This because like we're both like probably like we were talking about like what we would be doing in like a hundred, maybe two hundred oh, years. Oh, yeah. Is and... like the that way too? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe. I was going to say one to three days, but if... if I like that you, better. No, 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 I like that better. Things have, like, while I've been with uh, with you guys, and like, everything just seems to, like, really go, and I'm trying to really, like, live in the moment is kind of thing I've been trying to learn. And so, you know, waiting a hundred years to... Just for... Just because things seem a little different between you two, why don't we course correct a little bit, and let's call it a week three weeks okay does that okay. seem like a fair compromise yeah yeah but so i'm not supposed to do anything for that one to three weeks exactly. actually you're not supposed to do anything ever ever In fact, <laughs> um what what uh, until you know it seems like he's done something to to you know to to earn it um i so mean you could give me this really cool flower and she pulls it out the same what, like what do what am I supposed like? What does earning it look like? Well, so I don't I don't know any history between the two of you, but but he has to show some kind of uh, some some kind of effort. What did Derek do? That's that is oh. a question. <laughs> I want to know now. <laughs> but I, I mean, you you can ask that. Um. Okay. So. How did uh how did you and Varric happen? Like what did he do to earn it? Oh. Um well I was a um a um officer with the uh FETC, uh, making uh trading routes through the five fingers. Um at the time Varric was a part time uh dock worker to make ends meet because his family uh, who are all dwarves in the story um, owned a, essentially a failing uh, jewelry stop that shop that basically um, dealt with pirated jewels and things like that and since the FETC came in a lot of that business died down so there was clearly what started as a bit of animosity just because of our nature of being affiliated with the FETC at the time so um, we were, um, uh, having to, uh, how have I put it, um, respond to a domestic event when some of the dock workers were getting agitated, um, and then some of my, um, uh, specifically one of my officers, uh, got out of line and was starting to, uh, lean a little too hard into the, uh, the civilians. Um, I went down there to reprimand him, and it was a, it was a particularly troublesome officer, and he said something uh, disrespectful, at which point 
Varric said something about how to speak to uh, you know, a, an officer, and, and he, he made some kind of comment about my honor or something. That part was actually a little bit, um, it didn't quite hit me the right way, <laughs> but watching him Seems to do that. pick that guy up by his soft palate and just throw him into a barrel of grain that had been packed. So, I mean, uh, I can say we had to send him back to the mainland, but um, just watching him do that and then, um, you know, politely apologize on his behalf. Um, you know, I did have to um, throw him in the brig for about a week, but um, yeah, he was just, he always knew what to say. So it just kind of one thing led to another. So, after... So, so if Solinor ever picks someone up by the, the soft palate and, like, with one arm in kind of like mm -hmm. an arc motion and then just for you, that, um, you know, that could be something, for example. Not really his style, I'm going to be honest. So, what did he do, um... What did he do for you, you know, more recently to uh, gain your trust? Oh, I didn't say he had my trust. Oh, interesting. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm just, okay, so the reason I ask, not because I'm being nosy, um, it's just because, like, once something kind of weird happens that kind of messes with the flow of the relationship, I'm trying to figure out when, you know. Yeah, so again, I don't know your situation, but... Um, like he 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 threw me in jail. Oh. Well, that seems like. I mean, Ironford Prison, not just jail. <clears throat> oh, that almost seems bigger than my thing. Um, yeah, no, fuck that guy. Bigger what? than your thing. <laughs> Fair. Well, I mean. I mean. Speaking... Different strokes for different folks, but like Ferret kind of. Yeah, Cass. <laughs> I can I can speak on the the tumult of kind of abusive relationships. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing some context here. <laughs> okay, you know, it's a bit different because you guys are like, go spend two decades in a prison. You'll be fine. You'll wake up and it'll all be over. So it's a little bit different. But, you know, he uh, did it out of love, maybe. And eventually, you know, I've just come to this point where it's just kind of like, yeah, I'll forgive you. You know, whatever you kind of do. It's... As long as you don't kill anybody that Sorry, I care about. Is this a different person that you're talking about that you're in a relationship with that threw you into prison too? Well, it's a little bit, it's somewhat along the same lines, but you know, Varric's never completely endangered your life, so that might be like... I'm sorry, I feel like I'm in a girl's talk right now and I am not... I'm not mentally Just prepared for this. Just change forms. It's I, fine. <laughs> I was going to do... Okay, thank you. Do it. I like quickly... I just like embarrassingly look away and like come back and fail. Okay, I guess at least... I feel like I fit in a little more. Fit in perfectly, yes. I mean, okay, Sarah, it sounds bad. Ah. <sighs> That's it. I don't. I'm not gonna follow. Just crosses her arms and looks at you. Qualifier. I. It's like a. A whole, magical. I'm. I don't know. It sounds bad, and I can't even defend it. But I've forgiven him. <laughs> so. Smile. That's where we're at. That's all that matters. Just Maybe I shouldn't have, but I'll learn that in the future. You know. Okay. I mean, I. I don't. I mean, yeah, Ad, I think y'all motherfuckers need helm. That's all I gotta say. And she just, like, takes a swig of the uh, whiskey and just says, All right, well, good talk. If you ever need to vent or just chat, you can always reach out to me. I know you probably have ways, so anytime, day or night, happy to lend an ear, because maybe it would help you to say some of this stuff out loud. Yeah, that's fair. probably a very fair and statement. We'll just, we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that, because I, believe me, more than anyone, I know 
um, you know, what it's like to, to relapse. And, you know, it can be self-destructive. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes you gotta get a little self-destructive and that's okay. So I think uh, you should give yourself a little grace. <laughs> Are you? Never mind. Are you? Do you need a vent about anything? Nope. I got all my venting done. Wow. So now I'm gonna get breakfast, and then I'm gonna leave before the that. high chancellor wakes up. Yes. Yeah, you guys don't seem to be fans of each other. That's for sure. Oh, I highly doubt she remembers that I exist, but yes. Well, you know, she's got a lot on her plate. Yeah, a lot of big things happen. Mm -hmm. I love our weird little family. And I, like, go in and I try to, like, do, like, a group hug with Sarah and Vale. Um, as you do, um, Sarah is, like, staring you down, Vale. Like, like trying to re like trying to get a soul read on you. I she just, doesn't say anything, but she's just like trying to pick apart your soul right now. I give her a warm smile and hug her. Mm. Well, the two of you be very careful. Um, my husband has enough problems as it is, and I'm sensing a lot of. Uh, a lot of volatility in the company that we all choose to keep. And I will leave it at that. I like awkwardly side eye fail. Yeah. You know, now that I think about it, I think I'm gonna take this breakfast to go. Honestly, I get it. Don't blame you. Totally get it. Yeah. No. But thank uh, you. You're amazing. You're the best. She gives you a squeeze on your arm. Vale looks at you, gives you a squeeze on your arm, uh, pats Otteluk on the back, gives a nod to uh, Reyna, grabs a plate, and then begins to uh, walk out as Varric, fully armored, walks in. Uh, slip, a, slip a quick kiss as she leaves, mm -hmm. and a uh, snack on the ass. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Well, what, what's funny is before you could, she actually, like, uh, before you could even, like, turn, she actually, like, steps forward and does that to you. No, ah, I'll take it. Um, and then, uh, smiling, I walk in, uh, uh and try to get a breakfast plate. Okay. You step in, sit down. Oh, Luke! Auto Luke comes out with a, an embarrassingly huge plate of breakfast. I thought I smelled old wizard. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, we do have that smell, I'm told. How's it going? What brings you to our neck of the woods? It's a joke. Oh, look. look you... No, it's not. Oh. Someone no. else smell, so. Guano smells good to some people. That's all I'll say. What's the guano for? Well, some people use it for fireballs, but ah. if you ask me, that's just sort of a lame spell, because it's like any two-bit wizard that, you know, thinks that they're going to be somebody is just like, oh, I'm going to do all these fireballs and look, you know, cool in front of anybody, because anyone who doesn't know anything about magic thinks that fireball is so great. Uh, for example... My old traveling companion, Trisandra, she would use fireball all the time. And it's at some point it got to a point where it's like, girl, you need to learn some new spells because, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of bad form. I don't know, does that fireball sounds pretty cool to me, this Trisandra lady sounds pretty cool. He wasn't that great. She, she turned on our group. Uh, Raina can tell you all about it. It was super sad. I died. Wait a minute. Uh, somebody oh. traveling with you turned on you. <laughs> Surprise. 
Yeah, well, look, it, it wasn't even me. She turned on her, her... I was sort of just like the team captain slash head coach slash uh, the face and also uh, in the social situations it was I was sort of doing the heavy lifting when it came to sex appeal between all of us uh, but uh, yeah you know she there was what was this 200 years ago well yeah was this before or after the savage seven oh this was much after yeah yeah I'd already been thrown out of the Oren council and uh I left my days in the Dalmiri Desert behind at this point. This was uh, eight years ago. Uh, Reyna, you, you remember when Trisandra just totally turned on us, right? Because she got all, you know, horn dog for that Hawthorne fella. And you watch as Reyna just like looks like deadpan at him and just goes, maybe that's not a conversation we should be having right now, Autoluke. <coughs> and he goes, Ugh. You've changed, man. Hmm? You used to be cool. Me or, or Reyna? Oh, Reyna. You were always kind of... Verdict is still out. Kind of. You don't think of cool? You do cool stuff every once in a while. The way you... Dude, oh, you like I punched cool that wizard. That was... I'll tell you what. So cool. Eric, you're... You're cool, man. You're All cool. right. Any time a wizard gets punched, that's that's pretty cool. That's why I punch so much, because it's like, because then you put someone down in a duel with your fist, it's just style points. You know what I mean? Like you've really like mm, you just got done. Auto loop sometimes scribes scribes on us without our permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I yeah, assumed you always scribe on us. Yeah. Hey, See, you have a good He's good, creepy. Do you have a good show? I didn't see anything today. I can't believe Flash you guys night. aren't more weirded out by this. Ugh. If it was anyone else, I would have been surprised. Like I said, <sighs> this place is warded against crime, so I didn't see anything. And it seemed like you were all safe. Thanks for checking on us. Oh. No, not thankful. No thanks for checking on us. But... I guess she does not want my aid, so it will not be rendered. No, if I want your aid, I will ask for it. And if you want my aid, you can ask for it. I won't just randomly scry on you. You don't scry on your friends? Haven't we tried to scry on them before? Not a Luke, no. I'm sure. You, you've never no, scry on me. You've never scry on me. We've tried to scry on other people. <laughs> Without the you've, you've, you've never scryed on See, he knows we never scared on him because he probably no, has. It wasn't ask. He was asking. Oh. No, I've never scared on you, Autoluke. You know, Autoluke, if I knew how to do it. Do you even care? I do I care do. about you, and if I wanted to scare on you, I would ask for your permission first. No, it, she doesn't want to waste the spell slots. She doesn't. He, he looked at you. She doesn't want to waste the spell slots on me. I'm not, not worth even it. I'm just moving. Spell man. slots. I've got a magic item. Jeez. I'm a tired old man, just used up and thrown out like an old waste rag. I already know that you don't wear underwear. I don't need to scry on you and see you butt naked somewhere else. How are you scrying? What, what positions are you? What perspective are you? That's using? not <laughs> how. Oh my god. That is such a weird thing to say, Sundara. You're so weird. I think, Autoloop, that you are very fun to be around. That's all I'll say. Yeah, but not, not fun to be far away from and scry on, so... Anywho, pretty sure Sarah doesn't know how to use the teleportation signal, so I'm gonna go help her out. Oh. He steps off. Oh, oh shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> She's standing up. I would have came back and asked us. Oh, Vale. Yes. Interesting. To see you. It's been uh, a while. Having... Good chat. Yeah. I assume. Seemed appropriate at the time. Um, I, 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 guess I, I, better, I guess I better change. You could do whatever you like. Yeah. Vale. It's so Dora's else. like making eyeballs at Cass while Varric is talking. Yeah. Um, he, ca ca Vale leans down and touches your hand, and, uh, as she does, 
turns back to Cass. Alright, yeah. And whispers into your Wait, ear. Wait, let's not nope. touch I... me when we change. What? When we do the change thing, it feels weird when you're making contact with me. Just a thought you might want to know. S sorry. Um. That's Theseus? No, 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 just like one hand tunes to a different hand. They're generally the same sized hands, but I get it. They're different texture. You got, you know, guitar fingers on this hand. Okay, fair enough. It's, you know, just. Uh, I put I, my hand on top of. on top of Cass Vale's hand that's on top of Varric's hand. <laughs> and I say, if you ever want to hold someone's hand while transforming, it's fine. I'm fine with it. See, I, that's the inclusion that I it would like. It just surprised me. I just I wasn't ready to... for it. Not that it's a bad thing, Varric. I just want Cass to know that there's it's fine. I'm fine with him changing. Maybe give me a warning next time. Alright, I see where we have something there important to talk about. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, who's at the table right now? Can we get a head count? Head count. It's just the three of us. It's just, um, is it just us? No, it's plus Reyna and Alara. Reyna and Alara. I thought they were at the, their own thing. Uh, I mean, they're off to the side, but they're there. Okay, that's, yeah, that's fine. Um, right, so, uh, Varric. Uh, yeah. yeah, we need to talk. And... Did I do something wrong? Nope. Not at all. Not you this time. Awesome. Okay. Um... I need you to be understanding, but the reason we are all here, the reason we were all invited, is because you are... Someone is going to try to kill you tonight. Ah! I knew it. Okay. I knew it when I got here, felt kind of fishy, wasn't sure what it was, but I knew it. Okay. So, who do I get to kill? Right, I... Let's keep our voices down for this part. Oh, sorry. Who do I get to kill? Some witch. Some... Your she, girlfriend? She's not a witch. She's a druid. <laughs> but... Mm, magic woman. Strangely. Witch. Okay, you know, we can... We can... I'm a warlock. Well, I actually am. Uh... I know. No. We'll get we'll get back to it. Not helping you anymore, yeah. No. Uh anyways, it's uh and I I I tap his hand. The uh the circle oh, that witch. The circle is coming to collect. The redhead? I was told green. She's a green person, I don't think her hair was green. Okay, I, all I was told was green witch. Is that your witch, Eric? I mean, he tapped my hand and said that witch. I would assume. It's related to the circle. It's it's the circle that's coming. It's probably the same bitch. Witch. Same bitch, witch. <laughs> same. Yeah. So, um, she... to be fair, I don't know if I could kill her. Oh. oh. Quick question. Go ahead. <clears throat> Um, Solonor showed me some runes cool. on the island. Yeah. Can they hear everything that we're saying right now? Solonor? No, the... Oh, sorry, the circle. There's some runes on the island that he pointed out that are related to the circle. Oh. And I think that means that they're able to, like, see on this island easily, was my understanding. Well, let's go mess up the runes. And oh, as we were well. talking, I just realized maybe they're listening in on everything that we're talking about. Not good. How yeah. did you come by this information? Let's not talk about that right now. Till we figure nope. out the uh, let's rune thing. Let's talk about it right now. Well, okay. Rune let me. Thing. Let me. I've seen the sigils. They're hanging up <clears throat> all around the perimeter of this island. I think 
they're what's protecting this place from being scried on and all that kind of stuff. Your girlfriend's a druid? She is. Always been a druid? As long as I've known her. I... This ruin and thistle stuff is new. You mean she's part of it? I'm gonna cast Private Sanctum while they're talking. Okay. What's that do? Uh, we've got a very large area that is magically secure against um, scrying, divination, teleportation. Do we have to tell the truth in here? Uh, no, you can keep lying as much as you want. <laughs> I wasn't, but I don't I want mean... to be forced. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Your girlfriend uh, tricked you into bringing us all here so I could get killed? Listen, she didn't... She thought... We haven't talked that much, but yes. She thought you were just still the same mercenary that I hired out of Langston. She thought you were all nobodies to me that I was using, which is fair, because that's something I would have done in the past. So you're saying that we are somebody's to you? You are somebody's, yes. Am I your best friend? Wow. I am unsure of how sad it is, but yes, Varric, you I give him a hug. are my best you're friend. My best, you're my best friend too, guys. I mean, excluding my ex-wife. That's a different kind of relationship. That's not, yeah, you're number two on the totem pole, but that's high enough, right? <laughs> Is number one this bitch is trying to get me killed? Whoa, language. You don't have hey, to talk to her. I'm the one getting assassinated here, not you. Hey, you haven't actually been assassinated. You don't have to call her a bitch. Thank you. I was invited here under the guise of assassination. And then she told Cass. So look at that. Change of heart. Well, she, well, she didn't think cared enough about me to tell me. Okay. Cast did Dunsparrow say, um, uh, you don't care about Varric, so I'm going to tell you that they're going to kill him, and I hope that you help them kill him? The literal exact opposite. Okay, so Varric, we can watch our language about Dunsparrow. Okay. She's on our side. You know, everybody seems to dislike her for good reason, but on this, she's on our side. She's held to a pact, just like you are. Yeah, so I don't think I can do anything to the witch. I... I don't know how pacts work. I'm not a druid. Well, I mean, I guess... I mean, I'm not a... warlock, but I guess... Maybe kind, kind of? I don't know. <laughs> kind of. I mean, but I'm also kind of a... Paladin, I guess? I don't know. This is, you know what, this is very confusing. The more that I think about this. So... Did the contract that you signed say anything about not being able to harm her? You know, I didn't really read it. Okay. She just told me that I'd get more powerful and that, you know, Nobody would remember who I was and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, my wife, uh, my ex-wife, and my child would remember that I was, you know, their parent or their ex-spouse. So you've and nobody all, else. you've already weakened the pact. You've already gone against it. Yes. Um. Possibly why they're trying to kill me. And now that I think about it, um, I also, just, didn't, I don't... didn't your, like, you died and then the Raven Queen came and did some stuff to you? Do you think that messed your pact as well? You know, I don't know enough about, A, the pact in general, or B, pacts in general, to know what the rules are. Okay, that's fair. 
Oh, uh, and, and just to be 100% sure that we're covering our bases, you don't have a copy of the pact with you. Um, it was kind of like a magic paper. I didn't really get a copy that I remember. Uh, I mean, how's it with you? Huh? Yeah, how's, how's your pack work? Oh, um... A little differently? not really something I entirely agree to. Eh, well, I don't know. There was no contract signed. It was kind of just a, uh, a plea for help that was answered. Call that a verbal contract. Still stand up. I'm gonna throw an idea out here. Hear me out. Should we ask Auto Luke? He probably it, has some sense of how packs work, right? He's been around for a while. Can you get him in the circle thing? Oh, yeah, it's... I mean, it's probably a large chunk of the house, actually. Let's see... Yeah, it's a hundred foot cube, so... I go for the big one. It's a whole dining. So... This was, I mean, you guys, you already created this, and this, you were talking inside it the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you're inside this thing, I don't, like, you don't, you don't even see the, the room that you left. Wait, what? Are we somewhere else? Oh, no, it's more like a, it's a cube that is a warded area, so, like, you would see the edge of the cube. He made, like, a huge, like, mine, like, mime glass box. Yeah, but you could actually walk in and out of it. You just can't. Sound doesn't pass through the barriers. Okay. Um, so as you mentioned, Otto Luke, you see that he's like patiently waiting outside your cube. Just like, he's got like a staff and he's like looking at it. With the... No, Otto Luke, come. Oh, he can't hear me. I walk over <laughs> and stick my head past it. Hey, you could just walk in. It's not solid. I like pass my hand through it. Oh. Want to be you, rude. I you never, just can't really like teleport into it. Got it. I, you know, when a wizard creates a private space, usually it's bad form to just walk in. So I was just oh. affording you that courtesy after our talk about privacy and boundaries. You. Wow. That, I get. Okay. Thank you, Autoloop. That's very kind so, of you. Sure, here, I'll step in to say what I have to say because this. Oof, he steps in and says, So. Sundar, if you did not wish to be scried upon, one would make a private sanctum, right? That's, I... And, and by not making one, you're essentially saying, I'm okay with all my friends scribing. No, that's not how consent works, Otto Luke. It is. It's um, implied you, until you, someone you, says no. No, uh, no. Uh, it's not a... implied. Can we table this? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, very More important tab books. I'm right. Uh, Oh wait, I yeah, think I... Pierce's have an audio. No, I can... I can hear you guys, I'm just struggling to charge my oh. headphones. Oh. <laughs> That's their whole deal. That's pretty much the deal. They're they want to get rid of, like, technology and shit. Oh, like, dru uh, druid. Yeah. Uh, they, they kind of, like, their whole deal is they want to return the world back to their elemental chaos state. How do the kids Although say they that? call it... Oh restoring balance. So cringe. Exactly. Opposite of balance. But now, they're coming to murder me here tonight. Um, and I'm unsure if I'm able to attack the witch that made the pact with me physically. Ah. But we don't. None of us know enough about packs to know. Let me see what I can do. I hold out my arm with the mark on it. What are you doing? That's the that's the sigil. You said let me see what I can do, so I thought.
I'm gonna send the rest of them to eat some food. All right. I can help. Okay. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be two hundred fifty. Go that low. Oh no. Okay. That's just the way the spell works. Happening. Oh, okay. I got two hundred gold. Here. Thanks. I don't. <laughs> I'm. I mean, I'm just saying this out loud. I'm waiving my actual fee. That's just for the components of the spell. Okay. Here are. Here's the gold for the components. Thank you for waiving your fee. Thank you, Luke. That's a real friendly thing to do. Okay. I don't know why I have to stretch to do magic, but it does feel better when you do. Okay. Uh, gold. Quick count. Seems to be in order. <laughs> I don't trust the uh, door. Let's all hold hands. Awesome. Open it. Open it. I hold hands. Hold hands. Uh, you, uh, whoever's holding their hands with all of which I'm going to say is Sandara and, uh, Varric, uh, you notice that there is, like, this cold energy that begins to emanate from his hands, and the room around you gets even colder to the point where his hands now feel warm. And just says, Oh, spirits of the beyond, enlighten us as to the nature of Varric's pack with the circle of rot and weeds. Ruin and thistle. Ah, yes, I see something. It's coming to me. Hexen Six. A coven of witches hell bent on the return of our world to its primordial state. They worship a demon prince, the Queen of Rot once corrupted by uh, they've never grown out of their glass uh, but your pact it seems has been broken and there are consequences fell such as. consequences such as they seek to claim your soul seems pretty boilerplate it is pretty boilerplate, as far as these sorts of things go. Everyone still has their eyes closed, yes? No. Yeah. No peeking. No peeking. It'll break the spell, and then you'll have to pay another 250 gold. I don't believe you break my eyes Is there anything else? I see more. There is a, a man, a, a Goliath. He's big. That's me. He's working with the druids. No, but yet, he's one of them. Not, not me. No, I think that's Serpa. That is his name. He okay. is to be the executioner. Oh, oh fuck, that's the guy who killed me the last time. <laughs> there are five more. There is a millennia, the schema, a Selene Nightshade, Thalia Wraithwood, Isalda Blackthorn, and Cassandra Embervale. All sort of witching sounding names, if you yeah, ask me. Pretty, pretty much like so, Melania, Thalia, Rosalba. Right. I lost my concentration because you docked. It's gone. We've been talking this whole time on a loop. I know, but I, I lost it. I goosed it. Yeah, can I open your eyes? It's... Yes, you can open your eyes. I it's mean, how, how did you lose your concentration from talking, but you don't lose concentration getting hit by a fireball? You know, you know I feel uh, like that's not constitution. Uh, 
Um, Luke, quick question. Um, last time I fought this guy, I hit him, and when I would hit him, I would take damage. What's, what's up with that? How did how did it feel when you cold took damage? Cold. Ah, so he was wearing like a an ice armor, and every time you would hit him, it would just explode on you. No, it wasn't really there. It was like magical. Right. But it was like a magical ice armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of was like that. Yeah, there's also another sort of lame spell that really any infantile Good. conjurer could get around. Okay, well, I'm not really a conjurer. How can I get around it? Oh, that's... Not your fault. I'm not blaming you. Okay, thank you. I'm saying you are someone that does not use magic. Therefore, in a fight with someone that does use magic, you will always lose because magic is the best. And but I beat that one guy. I mean, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that guy sucked. Well, he did no magic. You know, so so yeah. Well, do, you, do you want my help or not? Yeah, how do I get around it? Well, uh, that sounds like a armor of ice magic blasting spell. Cool. And typically, to deal with an armor of ice blasting magic spell, you need to not hit them. But he is going to be trying to kill me. Right. That is where you use your magic to kill him first. Okay, don't have that. So the, the nature of the problem is you seek to hit that which will hurt you when you hit it. Is that Correct. right? Yes, yes. I see. If that is the case and you insist on doing it your way and not spending the next eight hours to learn magic, like I would recommend, then you would probably need help from your friends. Or at least your colleagues. Are you going to help me? Oh, no. I, I have things to do. We're not friends? Are we just colleagues? I didn't want to make assumptions about the nature of your relationship. We're friends. You and me are friends. You're cool. You punched a wizard. That was neat. Um, but I'm not going to get involved in this sort of thing. Last time I did, one of the group turned on us, and then I got stabbed and left there. They left my body there for a while. They left? Who left you? That's pretty uh, rude. Rain left me. And you're still pals around. Yeah, we've we've gotten over it. But yeah, they left me. It was in mud, too. Wow. Did you get an infection? Uh, no, my body sort of was re-put back together and stuff, but uh, there was a smell. By whom? Uh, me. I smelled weird. No, we put you back together. Oh, uh... Uh, Aoka, the, the witch... Cool. Um, She's got a whole thing going on. It's at right about this moment, uh, Samugi wanders in. What's <laughs> up, Jess? Oh, sleepyhead. Hi, yeah, Samugi. Yay. So, where you're jumping in, the group is in like a... You haven't missed much. The group is just in a bar. Um, Otto Lucas showed up, and there's just been a lot of talking. Um, they're talking about getting... Um, uh, oh, you weren't here for last session. What? After dinner. Okay, that's right. Um, yeah. uh, okay, so... Um, Basically, yeah, every, everyone went to bed, woke up, then, um... Talking about, uh, getting attacked by the Circle of Ruin and Thistle because they're seeking to kill Varric for, uh, reneging on his contract. Mm. Um, so as you walk in, Autolute's making a bunch of crazy hand moments, hand movements, and, uh, and muggle shaming Beric. <laughs> um, so uh, he goes on and says, 
regardless, um, someone having a, uh, uh, using a dispelling magic would do the trick. Now, that is a cool third level spell. I would take that over fireball any day. You guys know that one, right? The, the dispel magic. Yes, I believe I, we know that I one. don't. We know you don't, Beric. That's why we're in this situation. I can do consumption. I don't even know what that one is. So, don't. Uh, maybe it's best you just stick to what you do and let the, uh, let the magic people talk. It's a paladin spell. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Just, yeah. He's kind of spelling oh. this, Beric. That's my advice, too. Cool. So my advice was learn so magic. Yes. Oh, also, you're going to have a hard time uh, now that you've broken the pact. You're going to have a very hard time dealing with any of the uh, of the ones who held the pact against you. Why? Well, it was in the contract. Oh, that was kind of like a specific question. So That was. Yeah. So that was part of the thing, was like, now if you try to attack them, you're just gonna suck at it. Yeah, but that's proof. Only the person that he's trying to pack with? Um... Uh, it should be the, the whole cover. Oh, Jesus. I so, mean, depending on surprise. who shows up. Okay. So, uh, as far as I could see, it was all the names I gave, plus uh, Serpa. So, any of them are going to be hard to deal with. Cool. So, if I were planning this out, which I'm not, but if I was, I would probably say, Hey, Varric. Go on, the bait. And then, uh, you just, you know, sit there, try not to die, you know, dodge spells, try not to have something cast where they do the whole thing where it's like, oh, how will they fight me when they're too busy fighting you, dominate person? And then don't let that happen. Um, because that always sucks. Sounds like. Uh, yeah, it's super late. It's actually super awesome to do that against someone. I've used that line on so many people. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I would recommend. And then if there's anyone that's not on the list, so if you happen to be like, hey, are you, like, Iswal the Blackthorn or whatever? And they're like, no, then hammer to the base. Got it. Hammer to the base. Yes. Other than that, like, maybe switch up who's fighting who. Uh, if you have a, a pity person that's fighting um, Serpa, maybe have someone dispel the armor that he has on. Honestly, druids are super easy. They run, like, zero interaction. Does that even mean? Like, they just do their own thing, and they cast the spells. And then you can just be like, nope, counterspell, dispel magic. And then they're just stuck. They're like, oh, now I'm just an idiot with a loincloth. <laughs> and then you can do all your magic, and they can't do anything to stop you, because they don't know how things work. They're just like, ooh, I'm in tune to the spirit of nature. I turn into a bear. Like, who gives a shit about a bear? I don't. That's the spirit. You may live yet. So, sounds like Varric hits people not in the circle. Yes. I'm nominating Sabugi to hit the people in the circle. And... Cass and I... Do magic stuff. Do, do magic stuff. You watch as, um... Reyna, um... Stands up and is, like, waiting patiently at, like, the edge of your sanctum. Oh! Um... She steps in. And, and Reyna can hit stuff. Oh, are we 
hitting things. Oh. Yeah. Right. Who wants to Who wants to loop her in? Nope. That's all you need. Okay. He watches. She um, like pulls out uh, the her sword. As she does, you notice there's no actual blade. It's just a handle. And as she pulls it out, you see this like scraping metal on metal as like the tip of it is just being like apparated as it's like sparking as though it's just being sharpened like as it is appearing in front of you. That's cool. You don't need to take it out right now. Oh, I was doing it for dramatic effect. Besides, it never comes out of the scabbard and I miss this sort of thing. It's very cool. Yeah, I mean, the dramatic effect was very dramatic. Yes, I, I didn't hear what the conversation was, so I'm hoping that landed at a pivotal moment in the conversation. Oh, background yet. At which point, Autoloop just goes, Not quite, Miss Rada, yet again, another whiff. So, team, my little minions, my bright oh, little pickadees. Does it sound like we have a plan? So are you staying? <laughs> the we plan now? Is that what's happening? No, I won't be staying, but I can do something to give you a little boon. Okay. No way. You know, many, I said that of... Oh, go ahead. Uh, how many are we expecting to fight? At least six. At least six. At most? A million. <laughs> Sounds to me like a fair fight. <laughs> Especially if it's six. I mean, Man, I wish I could scry on you all so I could watch this, because it sounds like it's going to be epic. You can, Autoloop. I'm giving you permission right now. I know, uh, but it's a stupid island. I can't scry when you're here. Oh, just blow up one of those runes on your way out. Don't do that. Never mind, don't do that. Sorry, not my island. Or, just stick around. Yeah, just be invisible. You've done that before. You've definitely followed us around invisible. You know what? Beric is right. I shouldn't have been surprised that you scry on us. You know... I've got an idea. I kind of just expect it. It could be dangerous. And foolhardy. The contract Beric is in stipulates that... all the disadvantages associated with reneging on his contract are limited to the prime material plane. Different plane, fine. Stop it. <laughs> what if... What if we phase it? I'm going insane. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know what that means. Frickin'... Yeah, sure. And then I could scry on you. What would be crazy would be you would be in the ethereal plane. People would be blinking in and out, and you're just like whack a mole smacking them, right? And then you can see your friends kind of invisible on the other side. How? What do I do? A fight within a fight. It's fightception. It's brilliant, really. How? Do I have to do anything different? Uh, I would just cast the spell. Cool. Autoloop, is there a chance that you thought of this idea because you really wanted to scry on us, not because of what you learned about Beric's contract? To be honest, uh, it's uh, actually modeled on a, uh, a bit of uh, fan fiction that I'm writing about myself, in which there's a fight, and one person, because it's an idea that I had where one person is blinking in and out, it's two wizards fighting two of the highest skilled wizards one of them is me and as they're fighting they're blinking in and out of the material plane into the ethereal and casting spells on both sides because their wizard powers are just too great for one plane so they have to take up two I like it 
Okay. I'll read it when it comes out. It is already sounding sick as hell. Does that mean I'll be popping back and forth? No, I can only send you there one way. And how, for how long? Wait, yeah, up to eight hours. When's the, when am I getting attacked? Well, the, they're witches, so they'll usually be able to see within the ethereal plane. Uh, yeah. Now, the risk... I am. Will I be attacked? Oh, I don't know. You just tell me when you want me to do it. Oh, okay. The risk... Oh, yes. The, the risk is that they all see that you're there, and they're just like, mm, shrug, and then, like, all blink into the ethereal plane and gang up on you and just totally rip you to shreds while well, your friends can't do anything to help you because you're on a different plane. Could we just dispel the magic to pull them all back? No, because there's nothing to target. They're gone. Oh. oh, we can get to the ethereal plane with our horse, though. Oh. 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 Well, that sort of answers the question, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess you might not even need to... You have a hole that takes you into the ethereal thing? Yeah, Gunner gave it to uh, Cass. His name is Lucky. Oh, Lucky's still around. Yeah, it's Lucky. Gunner loved that horse. He let me ride on it once. <coughs> pretty, and... pretty intense horse, huh? It is, and I don't have much cushion. Yeah, he's not my favorite, but he's out. But he's useful. Money can Lucky take into the ethereal plane? Uh, I think everybody around him. But I'm not sure, though. So, you guys send me to the ethereal plane? Can I just chill there? Lucky can take three. Okay. And I just chill there? Well, yeah, because you really can't do any damage, not on the ethereal plane. So I don't get to fight. Unless they all come down yeah. to the ethereal plane. That well, what if you all just go down? Yeah. Well, we can't take Reyna, then. I could send another three. Okay. Perfect. In fact, I suppose Ooh. I could send myself too, and then just, you know, when the bad guys show up, I just cheese it. I don't even know what that means. He'll leave. Yes. Oh. Is there anything that we should know about the ethereal plane? Uh, it's sort of weird and a little bit dreamy, kind of empty, sullen. If but all the magic yeah. works? All your magic works. Or, if, you know, I don't know. I, that's a huge question. I don't know what kind of magic you use. Well, you're like a 400-year-old wizard. Um, excuse me, I'm like 300 and something. Um, but, that is a compliment to call you older than you actually are. So, you're welcome. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yes, very good. Um, uh, well... You know, to answer your question, your magic, or the witch magic, the one that prevents Varric from doing his thing, won't work. So by very nature of it being in a different place, a lot of magic won't work if it relies on you being in the material plane. But, I don't know, nothing significant comes to mind unless you're doing weird shit. Sometimes it's weird shit, I don't know. If... You die in the ethereal plane. Do you die in real life? Exactly. Yes. Are you Imagine it like this. Where we are now, okay? Let's say that we're in Langston, okay? And let's say that the ethereal plane would be like going to Orofin. So if you went to Orofin and someone stabbed you in the heart and you died, Yes, you would be dead. You think it takes only one stab in the heart to kill me? Uh, I, I don't know anymore. 
Um, the other question is, let's say, I don't know, I die in the whatever plane. Yes. Can they bring me back to this one? Oh, if you die, uh, that's going to be it. No matter what. What do you mean? Well, it's part of your contract. As long as the what? circle... Oh, yeah, as long as the circle lives, if you die, your soul is just, like, at the tip of a funnel that goes down into the river of sticks where there's a night hag waiting with a bottle well, of your name on it. I did die, though, before, as part of the, you know, ruin... Before you broke the contract? Mm. Was that before I broke the contract? Nope. Well, it must no. have been. Uh, yeah, I think you might be right. I don't think I'd go around to telling Sarah yet. I think only Cass knew. But that's because he's a smarty pants. All I can say is, if you died while having been in breach of contract, you would not be here today. Question. If someone somehow figured out that I the truth even if I didn't tell them is that a breach of contract? I didn't read the contract. How do you know what the rules are then? I skipped to the rules section. I mean, does not matter, Varric? We know that you breached the contract. The contract has been breached. Look, I'm yes. just going to say this out loud. I know we've all been really hard on Varric for not reading the contract, but nobody reads the contract. Okay? Thank I'm telling you. you that I wouldn't read it. You just make the deal and you live with your decision. Okay? Thank you. Someone had to say it out loud. Those contracts are many pages long. Long? So long? They, they make them long so that you will not read it. I was That's just the like, whole point. Make me stronger? You got it. Look, if, if someone... If someone could read that much, they wouldn't be making the contract in the first place. You see what I'm saying? And if it's like I could read that much, I chose not to. Yeah. Should we? <laughs> I heard my name. I heard my name. What? I was gonna let the cat out. Sorry. Should we um loop Dunsparrow in on any of this? No. Uh, this whole ethereal nonsense. Or just like the general plan of, you know. Why do you say no? The contract hold. Oh. Uh, does she invited me here to get killed. Ah, forget about it, Sundar. Why? <laughs> that's a very good reason. Um, if I'm just the because, one you know, she also has a contract with them, and I feel like somehow this is also breaching her contract, and now it's like, you know, maybe she just. I don't know. It seems like it's important for Beric and Gunsparrow to maybe be on the same page or cite similar book at least. No. I don't even want to be in the same library. Well, you both signed the same paper, so get over it. Uh, she she said she would support us with whatever decision we make, but I think there is the same problem of her not being able to directly violate whatever that contract is. Um, Isn't that also what you would say if you were tricking someone? Maybe, but she wasn't. Oh. Uh, I mean, Otto Luke had a good point with uh, the whole when you're too busy fighting your friend deal. <laughs> That's a very good impression of me. I tuned out until I heard that because it sounded so good. You should talk like that all the time. Kind of, I could if I wanted to, but I won't. Uh, I, I, I mean, I might be able to sort of take over whatever that green witch is. I don't know how useful that would be. I don't know if contracts can be ended like that. Oh, uh, you would have to decimate the whole circle. We just. Okay. Why are, How is that? This is so much deliberation for what we do every day. 
kill people. People are going to come. We're going to kill them. Now, can I just say, this only works if everyone in the circle dies. Alright. And it stands to reason that they probably would not bring every single member of the coven with them. So we gotta track them down. We're gonna track if, down an if, entire coven and murder do you them? And, yes. Because what can happen if you kill some members of the coven is they just make a new coven, and all the contracts from the old coven continue on with the new coven, and then you have another six to deal with. Done, like Sparrow. Issue. What is that her? Isn't she in? Is she considered part of the coven? <laughs> I don't That's like that line of question. I like that question. It's a good oh. question. Oh man! Oh no! You should find That's out. A spicy meatball. In this case, it does not appear that Don Sparrow is in the coven. I see. Oh, good. Now let's mention it. If she's in the circle, lower members are escalated to higher members. There's a chance that she could be inducted into the coven. But if, if she if breaks her contract go. first, right? Well, but then she'd be in the same pickle as Varric. Look, even I know you don't piss off a witch, let alone six of them. So, uh, to be fair, I only met one of them. So I didn't know there was a cover. Yes, I don't... Was this on the night by chance that I told you don't make any deals? <laughs> Maybe? And then we're sort of dealing with the outcome of this, and I'm trying to help you not die and forever be turned into a lemure. I don't know what that is, but yes, though. So. It's just sort of like a little pile of shit. It's like a little just... shitty demon that just, it's just like a little bag of shit flesh, <laughs> and then you're just like a little, like a little worm for other demons to just step on. Okay, well... That's what you'll that... Cool. You say a lot of stuff. And so I thought the deal thing was just kind of like a recommendation. I'll be honest. I think a lot of this falls on the rest of you. Why is that? Because at some point, I don't think any responsible and reasonable person would ever trust Varric to do anything on his own. Well, he kind of stormed off. And when Varric gets angry, you really can't kind of control him, so... I was also still drinking at that point. Ah, that's fair. So I guess it's no one's fault, really. Anyway. Thanks. So we could? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Oh, who's got the ring of spell story? Uh, that'll be Cass. Oh, that's All right. Good. How many, uh, how much does it hold? I'll <laughs> flick the ring and waste the crimson lash I have. It's free. Well, you might want to. You might want to find out how much it holds. Five. 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 Yeah. Five, five, five slots. Level spells. So it could do five. One fifth level spell, one fourth level spell, and one first level spell. Two second level spells and a first level spell. A third oh, level I'm, spell and a second level spell. The 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 thing I got to do it, it, it's an eight drop. Well, then eight I can't do that. Hold eight. Wow. And just... the tours. Wait. I'm sorry. Can we upgrade this magic item? Is that... No, you awesome. could have a better one, though. Like this puppy. <laughs> okay, well, let us use that one for the battle, and then you can have it back afterwards. I'm going to be totally honest, you guys. I'd love... This is actually a non-magical ring. I sold all my artifacts for reasons... But I used to have one. Booze. I am only slightly mm -hmm. upset. I just wasted well, a spell. Important stuff. Oh. Okay, so backup plan? Uh, does your girlfriend have an eighth of a spell? Can't you... Oh. Um, I don't know. 
Here's what we could do. Uh, you all can come back to me, to the, uh, what's that place called? Big Boat, Moss and... The Icebreaker? No, not that one. Mortal the, uh, Promise. That's, that's, that's her. Um, you can all come back there. I'll meet you at, say, supper time. Before supper time. So, whenever I get hungry, before that, and then I will cast a spell before I get hungry, and then that should give you plenty of time to do what you need to do. Although you will be in the ethereal plane once I cast it. So, could you just come here and cast it? Dunsparrow has a very good chef. Ah, a corn man. I'm sold. No. I will meet you here before I get hungry. Actually, I guess that kind of takes the hunger part out of it, because it could be before, during, and ever so briefly after. Is this how you um, always time things around your hunger levels? He looks at you and smiles with, like, this knowing look, and just says, A wizard is never late or early. Say it with me now. He arrives precisely when he needs to. <laughs> that one's for free. Thank you, Maruk, for your <laughs> wisdom. So, with that, I've held it up enough of the spotlight. I'm going to teleport out of here and be back at some time when I'm hungry. See you when you're hungry. hungry. complicated than I thought it would be. Well, Varric did say, let's just do what we normally do, and people come for us and we kill them. It's just also involving some extra planar travel. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go. Yeah. Get information. Yeah. Good luck. And I leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, Samugi, you want some tea? I will never say no to tea. Never. I get up and I go find Cobb to get some tea. Okay easy to do. So, as you all have some time to prepare, uh, what is it you are attempting to do? Uh, find Dunsparrow. Okay. I mean, I'm just going to her room. Okay. Easy to do. Um, Yep, she opens the door. Uh, morning. Um, Good morning. So there's been some discussion down at the table. And uh, I think we need a little bit more information about who's coming tonight. Uh, I wouldn't know. Who are you expecting? The witch that holds your contract to come? Are you playing? Are we, is this? I look around for like a scrying orb or something. Yeah, the, the witch who holds my contract is going to be there because she's the same one who holds Varric's contract and she's going to want to go on some long monologue about something or other. But if you kill the witch, that should break both of our contracts. Okay, um, we were just told there's, like, six witches, um, if that's not something you knew about, maybe it is something you should know. There's what are you talking about? Well, it was Otto Luke, so who knows how reliable he is, but I think there's more than one coming, 
tonight, or or maybe we have to. I'm a little lost, to be honest. Do you want to come so down to dinner and uh, or breakfast? <laughs> Talk with the rest of us. To be honest, I was hoping to take a less I know the better approach. Especially because in the event that you all fail, um, I'd prefer not to be implicated. Okay. That's, that seems reasonable. That seems fair. Um, I guess we will not talk about it further. All I will say is if me or Sundara sends a spell your way to sort of remove you from the equation, maybe let it happen. Convincing appearances and all that. Vague. I was actually planning on being off island. Oh. I have some meetings to attend to in uh, White Crown, rubbing elbows with some of the Langston nobles, and some not. Um, and it gives me, again, an out, as I would prefer not to be here for the coming events. Okay, well, we will clean up this mess ourselves. And, um, well, don't, don't act like it's not your mess to begin with, as your friend is in this by his own decisions. Yeah, believe me, I know. Um, it's not your mess to clean up. That's for sure. You did bring us into this problem, but it's it's okay. I understand. I also explained to you what would happen and warned you. I know. We had a chance to leave. But this might be a chance to kill two contracts with one death. If it works that way. Well, now you're making it seem like it's not going to. Well, Audeluc just put some words into my head, and he, he's old, he's wise. He said we have to kill everybody, which is a lot bigger of a problem than one witch. Yes, and that also makes me question whether I am not correct about my initial assumption. I mean, we're going to kill her. Like, that's... If she's coming here, it's a, she thinks it's a trap for us, it's a trap for her. Like, that's... But if that's enough, I, I don't know. I think either way, it might be smart for you to not be here. Yes, because in theory, what you do can make this worse as well. If it doesn't work. it now. And you're not about to sell out your friend, right? No. Of course. So, looks like we're stuck. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm fine with that. We, we get through everything. Uh, hasn't been a problem we couldn't solve yet. What did they give you? Um, magic and influence. Oh, that's fair enough. All right, I'll be down planning, talking. Come say hi if you want. Sarah's not here. Who? Okay, come on. <laughs> Look, I meet a lot of people. Um, you might not see me until tomorrow. 
I was actually going to uh, take off and uh, meet, uh, like I said, some important people for breakfast. But maybe I'll see you tonight. Hopefully. I'll be here. I hope you will. Don't let me get in the way of your big important meetings. I know you're uh, quite the face now. You know, Cass, I never wanted any of this. So I don't think that that is fair. Because I think an argument could be made that things would be very different if people didn't kill my father. Is that unfair to say? No. Again, not something I wanted to happen, but you... You know what? You invited my friend here to die, so I get to get a little jab at you every now and then. All in good love. In good love. Well, you don't die. And she's going to give you a peck on the cheek and uh, briskly walk off. Okay. I, uh... Join the rest of the group. Okay. Uh, well done, Spurs out. Out? Yeah, she's leaving. Ah. Do you and have uh, any additional information? No, I think she knows less than we do. Um, probably kept in the dark on purpose, and she kind of wants to keep it that way. Unless things Can't go bad. Sam. Can't say I'm surprised. Yeah. One more quip, Farrick. <laughs> and I can make you slit your own throat. So let's be, uh, let's be quiet with those, uh, yeah? Let's go I'm before. thinking, speaking of making people slit their own throats... Um, maybe we parse out the enemies with, uh, some suggestion spells. Or a mass suggestion spell. Interesting. Yeah, we show up, and then we're just like, hey, why doesn't everybody not attack right now? And then the people who do attack, we handle, and then we handle the people who aren't attacking one by one. Throwing ideas out there. Or we just chain lightning. I don't know. You wanna you wanna divide them so we can take them on one by one or Maybe. lesser. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's a really good idea. Not a bad idea. I mean obviously we'll have to handle the people who are immune to that sort of thing first. Um, but hopefully their support. And would be a little bit more vulnerable. I, th I think when we fight, we generally just lose all uh, strategy. Maybe, maybe like once one person gets hurt, we just we just kill them. We whoever whoever gets hurt first, smell the blood, kill them, and then move on to the next. Mm -hmm. Sounds and reasonable. Hopefully, we get all of them. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, with that, um, he watches uh, Reyna steps forward and just says, Well, I can take one of them probably completely out of the fight. That's ominous, but I love it. Yeah, so one that one that survives, you distract them. It'll it's more like um, I can 
I can make it so that one of them has a very hard time focusing on anything else but me. Mm. And obviously, if and when I put them down, I can move on to the next one, and then the next one, and then the one after that, and the one after that. Very bloodthirsty. Oh my gosh, okay. But I, because I haven't had much experience working with you all, I will allow you to maybe uh, help guide me as to where you think I'd be the most useful. So, this is the long way of me saying, you have my sword. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we have a plan ish, pretty much. We hang out in the ethereal plane, they show up, we mass suggestion, hopefully some of them. And um Reina attacks somebody who is I don't know, needs to be dealt with and then we all focus on someone else. Mm, okay, uh I was fucked with my headphones during this part, so I'm actually lost. Is the plan to cast Blink on all of us, or shift us permanently into the ethereal plane? It was to shift you into the into the ethereal plane. And unless they shift into the ethereal plane, we can't do anything to them. Correct. That was one of the risks, yep. Yeah. Why? Uh, they show up and they're just like, ah, dang. Yeah, that kind of seems. Um, the benefit is that in the ethereal plane, Varric can do full damage to members of the circle, whereas he is at a prominent disadvantage Got it. attacking anybody. Also, they want to kill me, so if that's where I am, I'm sure that's where I'll go. And maybe it'll help blow some of their magic, because they have to figure out how to get into the ethereal plane. And that's not easy. <laughs> or free. Okay. Good point. I guess if we're all, if we're all there, it's like they're going to have to come to us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's about as good as a plan as we ever had. So is there anything else you guys wish to do to prepare as the day goes on? Uh, Dunsparrow leaves, uh, Cobb is here, and otherwise the manor falls quiet as in anticipation of the upcoming May. Come back. Ooh. I don't want to die. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna. I mean, how much time do we have? Um, supposedly until evening. Okay. So maybe he's just gonna tinker at some. Do a little bomb making. So what, what kind of, what are you, are you tinkering with any like special like ingredients or anything like that? Or is it is just like your typical? Um... Um, I have some clockwork pieces. Is there a way that I can like kind of tinker them into like little <clears throat> suicide spider mines? Oh, like uh, you're, you're trying to do like Starcraft spider mines. That's pretty yeah. cool. Wow. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to say you're probably going to have to drop some money into um, picking up components to do this. Because I don't think you just have this, like, 
Well, how, how, how many clockwork? What, what's the quantity of clockwork parts we're working with? I have seven pieces. Okay. Um, if you're, for what you're attempting to do, at best, you could probably make two. Um, so if you'd like to, you have time. If you'd like to kind of go into town and try to do some trading to get what you need, um, you would know where to go in Langston to do this. Okay. Uh, what do I need to trade for? Uh, well, gold. Well, more clockwork pieces if you want to do more than two of these things. Oh, oh. I have some clockwork pieces that you can have. I've got ten. Nice. Okay. Sadara. We have 17 total. <laughs> that you come. Yes. Just a reminder. Oh, that could be useful. Okay. So, so how many how many are we working with that we're willing to use? Total. Uh, how many um, clockwork pieces? Mm-hmm. Um, you can have all of mine. I'll okay. buy more if we need it. Or destroy one of these freaking sentinels. For <laughs> pieces. <gasps> Did you leave? It's a free scrapyard. So 17. Uh, yeah. So you could make at best up to five. Okay. Let's try our best. And depending on, like, if you're going for, like, quantity over quality. If, if uh, we see some movie tinkering, uh, I would like to tinker a little bit as well. But I'll pull out a long green crystal I got, we got from that dragon and, like, point it at some movie. Will this help at all? It, like, stores magical energy, I think. What can I, what can I do with that? I'm not a very, I'm super well versed in... Well, to be honest, magical. I don't even, I don't even know what it does to be a hit. What is this? It's the, uh, green crystals we pulled from the dragon. Oh. I'm not sure if yeah, they like, are what I think they are. Um, yes, yeah, so go ahead and give me an intelligence check. Am I able to use wisdom instead of intelligence? Nope. Um, you get the sense that whatever these things are, <clears throat> are more of like a magical nature. You probably wouldn't have much luck using them yourself. Mm. Okay. Well, in that case, Cass, unless, unless you want to give it a shot at tinkering, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to put this to best use. I don't even think I could screw in a screw properly. Uh, I'll talk to Sindar about it. Hey. What's up? What you guys, uh, what you building? Suicide spider bombs. Oh, that's awesome. Um, pass any chance, Dunsparrow left the controls to her clockwork servants or is she willing to let me just you know smash them to their brains is that allowed i doubt she left the controller here um i could That's ask fair. if she's willing to sacrifice one or five i don't know uh, how I'm do just you thinking. need them for I'm just thinking, okay, um, 
we are in the ethereal plane, like deeper in the island, we send these out to the front area of the island and then those people like show up and they're just like, oh, it's just the clockwork servants, no big deal. And then they go like berserk and start, you know, hitting them and stuff and then maybe taking out some of their HP. Just don't idea so. You know what, if you're not destroying them, I don't think it's kind of an issue to take over for a little bit. I'm not going to ask for it. Better to ask for forgiveness. That's right? true. That is true. Yeah. So I say As you course. consider this plan, a couple issues come to mind. <laughs> no, don't tell us. The first thing you would remember is that supposedly this fight is going to be happening in the ethereal plane. <laughs> and currently, uh, you're pretty limited on what you could bring. Um... So, right now you would have space for one more creature. So, you, you could bring one sentinel. The other thing is that Dunsparrow was pretty clear about wanting to have the appearance of being neutral. In fact, it's almost not an appearance of being neutral. You almost got the sense that she was okay with however this fight ended. Use what's necessary, I think. Uh, does that does that extra creature does Lucky uh, is he included in the three he can bring or is it he can bring himself and three more okay so if we can get a singular sentinel in with us and hey you and Solinor are like buds now so you can just like Maybe. I'm sh sure he will still hate when I mess with his work, but, um, yeah. You should have seen his face when I told him about the icebreaker. Oh, what, about there being a living consciousness trapped within wood and steel? Living consciousness that was molded into the icebreaker and pretty much goes against everything that he loves, but it's fine. Also, couldn't you just get more clockwork pieces? You oh, yeah. Cute. Should we just... Should we just use these for scrap? I think that's pushing it a bit too far. Like, destruction okay, of property. Far. Yeah, destruction of property. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. you say, Cass. You're not listening. Oh. Smoogie needed more pieces. Yep. And we're like, oh... Do we go shopping or not? But like, you literally have a key to oh. a like a fucking oh plethora. Oh yeah. Property. See, no, yeah. If we're not down to like destroy Dunsparrow's property, I'm not going to break into Solinor's workshop and steal his property. With First us. of all, not breaking in. You have a key. Well, that's not exactly why I was given the key. I'm sure. I mean, he works on clockwork things, he wants to do stuff with you, so you need to, you know, work on clockwork things. Go take over the Sentinel right here. Okay. As far as the clockwork factory I, uh, that I was employed at for a short stint, I think I might still have privileges there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you have no reason to... Oh, um... We blew it up, didn't we? No, no, we no, didn't. No, 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 Dun Sparrow didn't want us to. Yeah, but that's back in. Um, that's a new town. Oh, okay. So not easily accessible. How far? How is that? Is that like a day's journey? Uh, I mean, technically, with teleportation, you could teleport there through the teleportation circle. If someone uses a spell. Haven't you been stingy absent? about? I'm gonna be real honest. What? Haven't you been absent from your job for a while? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what my uh, relationship with my former employer is anymore. I do have a sending stone. I could just. I know. I can always ask them. Give him a ring and 
Just say you're starting a new factory on this island and send, put some stuff on a teleportation sigil. What are you hoping to get? So they have sentinels over there, right? What, what were they even building? Uh, yeah, they were building uh, clockwork sentinels. Would that be a, a... Would that offend Solinor if we... If we... Under false pretenses... Oh, no, oh. I mean, I don't... I think that's more offensive to Dunsparrow since it's her clockwork factory now and she controls the sentinels that control the city so i look at cass so he looks at cass what do you want me to say i don't i don't know <laughs> she'll probably be pissed if her money making operation is disrupted but she really noticed one or two sentinels though yeah you know well we can only take one extra sentinel to the plane, ethereal plane. So why don't I try and still reprogram one that is here so that you don't have to go all the way to New Callum and then we spend a spell and then we're using energy. There. Yeah, try, try to take one over. I'm gonna tinker with this weird green stuff. We cut it. Uh, your accent was way too strong there. Want me to cut it? Oh, uh, possibly, yeah, actually. Once I, I take out my tools. Yeah. Okay. We can. So we can. I don't. I don't even know if we've resolved some of these things. We can. We can. Yeah. Resolve all that, and then come back to my stupid shit. I mean, I have ten. I have ten, seventeen parts. I have enough potentially for five. I mean, the sentinel thing is separate from my uh, suicide spider mines, so I'm just, you know, I'll make the suicide spider mines my thing, and then the sentinel control can be Sandara's thing, and then. Yes, whatever you're planning on doing with that green crystal can be your thing. Smash! That's obviously Varric's thing. So yeah, Varric's thing. So we all, yeah, we all got that. Our thing. We got our thing. work cut out for us. Does the monkey wear glasses when he tinkers? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they make his eyes look like really big. <laughs> We're talking like bubbles, Coke bottle glasses. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, so you are attempting to tinker some spider mines. Um, okay. Give me a, uh, let's do a tinkering check. And is anyone going to be helping you as you do this? Because if someone does, it's going to lock them down for the rest of the day. Because they have a limited time to prepare. Can I help do this? I mean, as long as you don't s smash my... You my can room. try. Go ahead and give me... So, Varric, you're going to attempt to help. Give me a unskilled dexterity check. You got it. That is a natural 20. <laughs> Steady as hands. Nice. 22. It's the jeweler in him. Yeah. Steady as hands stack. You got jeweled. Um, okay, I'm going to say, for the rest of the campaign, if Don't Varric ever okay. wishes to assist with any tinkering, you can actually do so without a skill check. Love it. Uh, You're picking it up. So, Assuming I survive this. Yeah. Well, Varric, strangely, very good with his hands. Um, you kind of expected him to be, like, extremely clumsy because he's got, you know, huge Goliath hands and you're doing very intricate work. Um, obviously, there's some things that, you know, he's not the one tinkering, but at the same time, like, it's actually very helpful to have him around. Um, and it significantly cuts down um, the time pressure you have to do all this. 
So you're actually able to, for the parts that require a lot of care, to put a lot of time into. So go ahead and give me a tinkering check with advantage. With advantage, that is a 12. Okay. So, um, this is a, <clears throat> without a dedicated workshop, and essentially just like spreading out a bunch of parts, like over uh, a very nice rug, <clears throat> uh, you're still limited as to what you can do here. And you're attempting essentially like a new invention kind of on the fly. So you get through a significant amount of parts before you realize, like you have to go through multiple iterations of, uh, of this novel invention. So I'm going to say um, nine of your clockwork parts are essentially wasted, and you'll have to salvage those. You can salvage them later or have Sandara do it, but there's going to be a little bit of waste in the process. So, um, and I'm going to say that's going to, I mean, to be fair, Sindar can do it for free. But for now, those parts are going to be out of the rotation, and you'll get seven of those back once they're dismantled. So, um, with that, you can make two of the um, spider mines, and you'll have one, um, one piece left over. So you'll have a total of eight um, clockwork components left and two spider mines. Okay. Can I use the remaining eight to try another one? Not with the time you have. So that's going to get you through like the entire day of working and you're going to come up with two with eight clockwork pieces remaining. Basically the way these will work is you, you actually have to kind of like dig them into the ground and it's going to be a trap that is not going to care about who steps on it and whoever does step on it is going to trigger basically like a shrapnel explosion in that area. Okay. I see. So they burrow into the ground. Yeah. I was thinking more like kamikaze style, like they just like attack, like go after. Um, the issue is you don't have the time to like make an actual construct. Mm -hmm. What you could do is instead use these devices as having like a remote pilot, i.e. Sundara, to like matrix into them and then kamikaze them into the enemy. That would be doable as well. So it's up to you guys how you'd want to use it. Because And what you could do is just leave them on the presumed battlefield mm -hmm. just like out and then if Sundara wants at any moment she could activate them with, uh, you know, with her commune ability. Alright, well, that sounds good. Okay. Is anyone else doing anything to prepare? Inspecting green dragon crystals. Okay. Give me a arcana check. My first roll. Mm -hmm. uh, a seventeen. Um. You've never seen anything like the... You know what? Give me that with advantage, just in case it makes a difference. Uh, or, uh, I was going to say, not advantage. Give me a d4 to add on top of that, because this is a profession thing. Uh, what did I say? 17? Yes. Mm -hmm. 21. Nice. Okay. Nice. Um... These crystals, whatever they are, are just the perfect substrate for enchanting. Um, 
you can just tell by briefly inspecting them and handling them that like these things just want to be enchanted and you can tell that the way that they are receptive to enchantment magic um, that it would significantly cut down the time of um, of essentially like creating runes out of these um, not only that but they're kind of like an all-purpose runic material so it also saves you the trouble of having to find the right rune for the job um, to be honest you almost feel like you might not even need like a table to work with these things okay All of, all of the enchantments I have memorized are extremely irrelevant. So I'd be doing stuff off the cuff, sort of experimenting. Um, well, you get the sense this is pretty valuable material, yeah. even if you don't end up using it yourself. Um, but you can absolutely try to improv here. The risk would just be that you would put a useful enchantment on this very valuable substance and then have it be essentially worthless. Yeah. However, if there was any time where you could improv something, this would be it. ingredients just make like a silver ring um or any kind whatever so to be honest um your your best bet is to turn this into a gemstone that can be like patched into any kind of jewelry that's that's what like, i want yeah even just like a little pendant for now and then you could affix it to a ring or something fancier later while keeping the enchantment. Okay. Uh, and Varric is locked down for the rest of the day because he helped. Varric is locked down. Okay. But again, for what you're trying to do here, you don't need, like... I don't need a gem cutter? I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. I'll say Varric, this is such an easy... Cat. Like, this material is pretty easy to work with because we'll say Varric did look at it because he busted out his jewelry kit before. Like, it would only take, like, ten minutes to pull him aside to have him cut some stuff for you. Okay. It wouldn't necessarily help you with any skill checks, but he could get you what you needed. That's fine. Uh, I want to just just cut me a, a somewhat large, we got a lot of material, uh, tear teardrop sort of shape. And then I will um, begin working to enchant a spell into it to be used upon shattering so you could go about this a couple ways you could attempt to make a ring of spell storing that you could put spells into mm -hmm. you could attempt to create the easiest thing would be to attempt to create a ring that will use one spell and then probably be destroyed that's kind of what I'm aiming for um, you could also attempt to make a ring that could um, use uh, one spell perpetually with charges that would reset as it had time to absorb the weave around it. That would be the most challenging. You could do it. I like that a lot more. <laughs> so I will... I will Obviously, that is a much, much mm -hmm. higher. I will, I will expend um, whatever extra amount is needed to sort of create a permanent thing that recharges 
Well, I'm telling you, this is all going to be a skill check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it is going to take more materials to even attempt it. Um, also, as part of this, you could attempt to dump some spell energy into here uh, to assist with your chances. I'll tell you, um, you're not going to get a ton of bang for your buck by dumping spell energy into here, but it will help with the DC. Okay, um, that's that's fine. I will, I will. Uh, I don't have fancy gear like Samugi. I'm I'm squinting. I'm struggling to carve these runes into this glass. Uh, I, I will dump all of my first level slots, which is six, and then two of my second level slots. Because okay. I don't use them, to be honest. Well, what spell, well, first off, what spell are you trying to put in here? You have so many first level slots. It is. I, don't, I straight up don't use them. Um, steel Wind Strike. Okay, that's a big spell. It is. So, the bare minimum of spell energy to go into this is going to be... Um, that's a 5th level spell, right? It is. If we're, if we're not counting the 5th level, me dumping into it, I'm already dumping 8, eight levels. Um, no, so that, that's... Okay, so that's what I was going to say, is there's a bare minimum you have to put in, which is 5. Okay. Um, you can reduce the cost of this. You can reduce the DC by one by dumping another five levels into it. Good lord. Um, oh, after okay. that, you can reduce the DC by another one by dumping another seven levels into it. And then nine, and then eleven, and so on and so forth. What do you think we have? Wait, does, uh, does the second level slot count as two? Yes. Okay, then I'm at ten right now with my four slots, my two packs, and two of my oh. second levels. I'm at if you 10. shifted something, if you shifted something around and went to eleven, you would shave the DC by one. Oh, you know what? Sure. We'll. Uh, we'll you trade a two for a three. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that. Okay. And this could still fail. Yep. So you are going to roll an unskilled, or sorry, a skilled. So that's, um, uh, it's going to be a proficient charisma uh, skill check with a d4 profession dice. Oh, I'll take that. Um, the check DC it. for this, uh, with your cost reduction, is going to be 18. Okay, so plus... I'll say, for the nine. sake of this, Alara is going to... She is going to give you a guidance spell because she is here, and she's going to assist with the. Uh, it's been quite a while, friend. Uh, actually, you know, as, as Alara comes up, there is there is a bit of like a. It has been a little bit since we just sort of relaxed and. Yeah. Tinkered around. Um, okay. I nineteen. I forgot what you said. Uh, the DC was 18. <laughs> Thank you for that plus five. Or I guess me. So, part of it. Um, the way this is going to work is um, this ring is going to have two uses of uh, or two charges that each has a use of steel wind strike. If you use if you use the final charge, the ring will shatter. Okay. Every day, you can roll a d6 and if you roll above a 4 or a 4 or above, sorry, no no, a 5 or 6, you regain a charge. Okay. I hold it up in the window light. Admiring my beauty. Um, you watch as um, Alara, you would just see, like, to her side, she very subtly, like, takes her hand, turns her palm outwards, 
and then like makes a claw motion, like kind of expanding her hand rapidly. And you hear this distant like <laughs> to give like this epic like <laughs> to do it, like something epic was just created. Thanks, Alara. I appreciate the <laughs> assist. I'm excited to see what you do with that. Oh not not me. I'm excited to see what Varric does with this. What? Speaking of which, um, Magic for to, me? I need to assist with things back at the Mortal Promise. Um, I'm one of the few people that has healing capabilities, and there have been a few attempts at getting to some of the members within. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to do something to help you all just before the event. So I'll be setting up a ritual circle and shortly before you're ready I'll have a little blessing to give on to you. Oh, we will take it. Thank you. Is, um, is your, your brother with you? Is he okay? Have you heard from him? I was planning on reaching out, but with everything going on now, I worry about involving him with everything. But I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. All right. Well, you know, there's plenty of sending stones in the Mortal Promise. Yes, I. I think I'll be in touch. And if you ever need anything from me, don't be afraid to ask. As far as I'm concerned. I'm still the healer of this group. Just more than you know. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, with that, um, she's going to go begin setting up a ritual circle. Sundara, was there anything you were doing before the upcoming melee? Um, I'm going to give myself gift of alacrity. Mm. Yeah. And then I'm going to try and commune with one of the, all of the sentinel or clockwork servants here look the same, right? They all the same model? No, there's a couple that look like they're more decked out for being security detail. Going to security detail clockwork sentinel. Gonna okay. try and kill that bad boy. Okay, give me a um, charisma... Uh, proficiency skill check. Twenty-three. Yeah, this is a child's play. Um, well, like this is almost like um, just like wave of the hand as it walks by. You're like, oh no, you you're coming with me, and you like wave your hand, and it is yours. Like you've wiped it completely. This is a brand new thing. You. Uh, Wait. And then, like, ten minutes later, I'm just standing there like, Okay, guys. Uh, I did my thing. We're ready? <laughs> as I, as Cass is, like, cutting gems and samugis. Still tinkering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, uh, some time passes. Um, uh, the teleportation sigil uh, glows with energy, and uh, out comes out Otteluk and just says, All right. Where is the corn man? And he, like, begins meandering over to the kitchen. Um, uh, as you all, um, uh, you watch as Alara is also uh, near the kitchen area, and she has a whole ritual circle laid out. And she steps out and says, um, Whenever you're all ready, I had a blessing that I wanted to share with all of you. I step in the circle? Lay it on us. Yeah. Um, you watch as she begins, like, rocking back and forth with her shoulders, as she begins kind of, like, muttering some kind of incantation in, an, in a language that no one here understands, right? Unless someone has some stuff. Uh. I don't know what language it is. What language is? <laughs> um, 
pass, you would you'd be able to identify the language. This is primordial. Okay. Sorry, um, as she begins muttering it, her incantation okay. begins layering over itself, and you begin to hear different voices that are clearly not um, Olara. You hear a coven and a coven of covens behind her, and this chorus of witches that are all in sync, muttering the same incantation. And with that, there's this like explosion of feathers that were laid in this bowl, and as they explode out, they stop. And there's just this room of just this these like suspended feathers that have been frozen in time, as they are just like ever so slightly moving towards uh, the floor. And with that, you just see this like white glint in Alara's eyes, and you all begin to feel this warmth in your chest that almost feels a little uncomfortable and almost like a little too hot that begins to like rise to your throat and then like move up the back of your skulls and you all begin to see this white glint coming out of all of your eyes. Um, with that, Alara says, Now, I don't know what the future holds for any of us. I don't know if my destiny will have me continue on with this group. However, you will always be family to me. Now, and you watch as there's like this, she kind of stops herself and like gives like a close of her eyes and you ever so slightly see like the beginnings of like a tear begin to form in one of her eyes and she says I don't know if you will ever know how much you have all meant to me and regardless of whether or not I continue with you all I hope that you hold on to the bond that you all share Merrick you were inducted as a brother into what was before a sisterhood. You were instructed to find a coven of your own to spread the influence of the Raven Queen. I don't know which path you will stay on, but I hope that you find your coven. This is a bonding ritual. And maybe you shouldn't have to look too far. But that is still the path you wish to walk. Um, and with that, you've gotten to a point where that warmth begins to go all the way to the top of your head, and you begin to feel like this energy almost like leaving you from like the back of your skull. Um, and in of everyone here you almost see this like ghostly like raven's mask briefly like appear and then like dissipate behind everyone's head with that you all gain 20 temporary hit points and you have advantage on wisdom saving throws with that you watch as um Lara looks like visibly spent and you watch as she just like dealer like pfft, like shuffles out or like plays out these arrow cards and then just like quickly like pfft, does like a quick shuffle uh, flips a single one flips it back puts her cards away and says I'll be praying for you uh, she goes over to you, Sundar, and gives you a hug. Varric gives I you a hug. Her. Be safe, Alara. Everybody gets a hug. And then... Uh, she turns to Varric and says, If the path of the Raven Queen is one that you want to stay on, I'm always happy to talk. Thank you. 
and even if it's not. It'll always be like a, a crazy uncle to me. I think I can live up to that. She gives you a big hug. And uh, as she uh, gives Smoogie a hug and then also a fist bump on the way out. <laughs> Thank you for everything, Laura. She says, well, when you talk like this is goodbyes, no one's dying tonight. We'll see. Well, I'm all out of diamonds. We've got some. We'll call you if you need to. Sounds good. I'll be ready. Um, so she leaves. Just point of order if anybody dies. Well, Varric, besides you, if anyone dies, expect to, <laughs> expect to stay dead for a day. But don't worry. It, it, I, I imagine it's kind of just like that, you know? You're gone, then you're back. I don't know. I do have contingency messages that'll send out if I die, just a heads up. Don't be surprised. <laughs> if you die, some glyph, you just some mass. glyph of wordings that add some messages that, yeah. I just wanted to let people know, you know, my family and stuff. It's very, it's cool. It's very cool. Okay. If you start getting messages from people because I'm dead, just give them a heads up. That'll be back. With that, um, Otto steps out, still holding a plate of food, and just goes, All right, then. Who's getting it? Who wants right. the juice? Who wants the juice, and who wants the horse? I want the juice. Take the horse. You want the juice. Who else wants the juice? I guess, um... Yeah, robot. Raina just yeah. goes, it's on horse. Um, uh, I'll go with Varric and... You'll go with what now, Sundar? With Varric and the juice, on Luke. Two for the juice. We got one more spot on the juice boat. Bring the robot. Okay, I'll robot. take the juice. Nope, nope, Smoogie's coming with We went first, he said he wants the juice. And I grant upon you. And he like closes his eyes and holds his hand out, and he makes like a fist and he starts. And as he opens his palm, there's like this distant like. And uh, you watch as Sundara, Varric, and Samugi vanish. I look over to Varric and Samugi. I mean. Guy's got style when he casts spells. What can I say? Oh, there. I don't think they can hear you. Can you not hear each other? You get. You can hear each other. You cannot hear. You. You. You watch as Otteluk looks like kind of dumb because he's like looking around, but like clearly <laughs> above your head, like not making eye contact and just kind of like eating food. And then you just see him like talking, but you don't hear anything. It's like this faint warbling in the background. You can kind of make out a little bit of speech. Um, yeah, exactly. And it just goes, And the deed is done. So whenever you and your horse are ready to go, that should be that. I will be honest. I do not remember how they come out of this. <laughs> oh God. What? How long does it last? Um... If I recall, somewhere on the mark of eight hours. Okay. That's the spell. It's a big spell. What spell is this? No idea. Actually, I have no idea. No. Did you give me a ring already? I didn't. But can we say I did? Because that all just happened <laughs> real fast. Okay, sure. Okay. What does it do? Uh, you know, before you get bamfed away. Uh, this, I said, you know, me and Alara, blood, sweat, and tears and all of that. Um, you can do it twice. Don't do it the second time unless you really need to. 
it'll break. Um, you know, sometimes you have a little bit of difficulty getting to people. This lets you hit, like, five people and kind of just get there and hit them. You mean like I can move fast? Uh, you teleport. So uh, expect a little uneasiness. Beric, as you kind of concentrate on the on the ring, you have this almost like it's kind of like when you beheld the cursed uh, hammer. You have almost like this sense of something you can do. <laughs> um, you have like this urge to just like teleport between like five different people and fuck them up the way that you've seen some of you do. Can I use my jeweler's glass to identify? To identify? Yeah, this is a uh, a ring of steel wind strike. So this allows you to cast steel wind strike. Oh, I mean, since you yeah, I'll just read it. Um, so it's five creatures that you can see within range, which is 30 feet, so they all have to be within 30 feet of you. Uh, and then you make a, a it's like a plus nine melee spell attack, and it's 6d10 force damage on hit. Uh, and then once you do all five, you can teleport to five feet between any of the targets. You can choose where you end up. And ending that with an action surge would be sick as hell. Do it I, again. Would I, would I do it again? Um, in theory, yes, you could. It would break the ring. <clears throat> okay. I'm fine action with the ring being broken. <laughs> like, let's be honest. It's, it's a pretty cool move. Cool. Okay. Off with you. Uh, he's vamped away. With that, um, you get the sense that time might be nearing. Um, the question is, do you want to have this fight within the manor or somewhere outside? I like the idea of keeping appearances as long as possible, but that's just me. I mean, I I would have in the ethereal plane walked out. The manor. Okay. Okay. Um, you do get the sense that you'll have more ability to move around and stuff like that. Yeah. So you kind of go out into the forest. Yeah. Wait, I just realized I can't interact with my Clockwork Sentinel if I'm on a separate plane from him. Right? Um. Says who? Yeah, I guess that's. I guess that's true. It's like. Well, I just. It seems like the ethereal plane and the material plane don't really yeah i mean i i, I mean I it'll know. still it'll still default to listening to you whenever it's also there so right now it's just like blankly staring out into space okay that's fine so are the rest of you joining in the ethereal plane we want to go right now and then surprise them when they get here and just sort of start it off like that Oh, crying. Little manners never went. And you don't have to. You can no. talk with them first. A little chit chat. Yeah, but then I can't get to the ethereal plane, so I think it's an all or nothing. Yeah, whatever. I'll just I mean... rummage in my pocket for a little horse figurine. Set it down on the ground and back away. Doors, stomps, and the rest of you are in the ethereal plane. Hey, guys. I don't like it here. You do or you don't? I don't. Ah. Why not? It's too creepy. I just feel like one of those men are gonna like pop around the corner again and start mm. towards us. How'd you go? Uh. Something like that. So, Mookie, do we need to set your bombs that you tinkered? Or do you throw them? 
Um, I think I'll set them out into the field here and, you know, whether they step on them or if at any point you want to take the opportunity to move them about, just, uh, mind, mind your footing during, during the battle. Got it. And, uh, releases Don't. a little spider mines. Don't step um. on me. Don't step on me, correct. Ver, if will you be um, opposed to having the sentinel follow you around and just hit whatever you're hitting? I would not. Okay. As long as it doesn't get in the way. I will make that its default programming. Don't get in the way? No. <laughs> I can be with the sentinel and tell it to... Um, Attack whatever Varric is attacking. Okay. Okay, uh, with that, you start to head outside. Um, you do see there is an area of um, kind of, uh, of lighting in the forest. Um, you see, in the distance, you see like a few, like a pyre, and then surrounded by a few like glowing orbs of, uh, of fire. Interestingly, you did not notice this before when you were not in the ethereal plane. Ethereal plane all along. Huh. Is there anything new we can see with the sigils that are hanging around this place? If I like go, um, they're very clearly like burning with magical energy okay. at this point. That seems a little strange. They're extending into the ethereal. Yeah. Well, I guess some of my magic, so like the private sanctum that I made, I think extends into the ethereal plane. Okay, that's normal. There is, there are some, there are some spells that do that. Um. My wall of force also extends into the ethereal plane. I guess it's not unheard of. Still kind of weird. Should we just wait here? I look at Varric. Um, I sit I didn't. I didn't plan the attack. Uh, with that, after a short period of time, you watch as uh, you, you find in the circle, in the ethereal plane, around the pyre, there are clearly, like, witchcraft materials um, that are around this, uh, like, brazier. Uh, around that, there are multiple, like, braziers that have a blue flame and in the center there's an altar with a skull um, as you're sitting there just waiting you watch as the skull begins to move and just begins to whisper and these whispers begin to compound on each other and after a short period of time you hear like one of the trees begin to like creak painfully and you watch as it begins to shudder and then like bark explodes out of it and there's this huge wound that opens up out of one of these trees as it's just completely split open and with that you just see this goliath hand pull himself out you see um serpa uh, looks like he's made a couple upgrades since you last saw him he is wearing like black steel armor that comes out in like these steel thorns and the armor itself has like a hood and like a cloak as well like a, almost like a little poncho like cape slash thing that's kind of coming off the back of it as he um steps out he picks up this um hammer that looks like it's just completely made of like stone and thorn as he steps out he turns he doesn't see any of you he reaches his hand out and pulls out um, what looks like this very old, like, just dilapidated, decrepit woman that's, like, hunched over and just, like, crawls out, as well as um, 
a second figure that's just like this force of just pure like ice because you see the tree freeze over as she just like floats through she almost looks like some kind of spirit um at this point are you all trying to be stealthy uh i am yes okay I mean, how kind of far away are we from them? Um, if or you're by the altar, you're, you'd be about 40 feet. Okay. Are they in the regular plane? Uh, it, it appears so. It's okay. a 16 stealth for me. It's unfortunately a natural 20, which I wish would have happened later on. So that's a 25. Okay. Take more we can. Yeah, it's better than a 1. An unnatural 20. Okay. Uh, some moves. <laughs> we're rolling initiative, is that what we're doing? No, so, no, no. Uh, uh, stealth. Stealth. Seven. Oh, there it is. Nice. Okay. Um, so with that... Watches as the uh, as these figures exit. He watches us a uh, third and fourth figure both step out. Um, uh, one familiar uh, green witch that very you recognize, and uh, the second is what looks like a. Uh, it looks strange. It's a humanoid with the legs and the head of a goat. Kind of Gross. just wearing like tattered rags and they are wielding like two axes and they step out and sort of like looking around with those like square like pupils just kind of like looking around. And as he kind of like hobbles out, um, you watch as um, uh, Millennia the Green Witch kind of like holds her hand out she looks down and then looks up uh, right at you, Samugi. Uh, and with that, uh, she says something in a language that no one understands. And then she... Can we, we can't also... We can't really hear them, right? It's, or yeah, they... It's, like horrible. it's okay. And you watch as uh, Serpa begins to stand to attention. You watch as he holds out his arm, and there appears to be like this, uh, like, fro like frozen skull that forms. And you watch in his armor, there's like this central plate, and he takes the skull and like jams it into that center plate. And you watch as ice shards just like fire off of his armor, and he's now just completely encased in ice. Um, with that, as Melania touches him, he looks up, and his eyes also lock with yours. So he and he steps out and just says, So, seems you've expected us. You can come out now. And with that, there's this... <laughs> and they all become a lot more clear, and it appears that they are now in the ethereal plane. I was hoping that we could all uh, have this dinner in a bit of a unconventional way I sort of step out from behind a bush <laughs> if he steps out I step out yep we're not here for dinner this is going to be a very simple exchange this one made a pact and he broke it we're just here to collect I have no quarrel with the rest of you he won't be resisted, and it certainly is not worth your lives. Now please, step aside. 
How far away are they? Uh, they are about 40 feet. Mm. Are they all together? Yeah. They are. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna run. Okay. 10 feet, and then I'm gonna activate the. Roll map. initiative, because as soon as you start to move, everyone's hostile. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's fair. Oh no, I wanna use my real dice. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> my initiative is 29. <laughs> Jeez, Jesus, I gotta make the box longer. <sighs> Let's go. 18. Don't worry, everybody, I can bring up the rear. <laughs> What'd you get? It's good to have them spread out. Uh, a 3 for an 11 total. Or 12. Total. What's your initiative? Uh, Bonus? Plus nine. I, I have alert. So uh, nine? Yeah, I get a flat oh. plus five. I'm always ready. Oh, Cass, I wanted to remind you we have a floating um, sorcery point. Oh. What does that mean? That is. An extra sorcery point to do magic stuff. Well, no, I know. Yeah, I do like that. I well, you said it. Sorcery point does. I mean, how do you get a floating sorcery? Oh, at Which dinner the other night. You? Yeah. We got um, sorcery points, and you and Samugi got Mage Hand for probably another hour or two. Mm. Uh, Samugi oh, wait, was your not you. Fair. I rolled a natural one. Oh, wait. So that's okay. Could be worse. Nice. Did uh, it? Cass, what was yours? Uh, 12. Okay. Top of the round is going to be Sundara and Varric. Nice. Alright. As Varric oh, goes sorry, charging... Let me share this for you guys so you can see what's going on here. Don't need to. It's the last round. Ooh, I like the lighting. Ooh, oh, cool. this is nice. I'm the ethereal now. What the hell is that big ass thing? Excuse oh yeah, so right as you start running, you watch as one of the witches, like, just flicks her hand, and one of the trees just, like, bursts out, and just, like, is surrounded in thorns, and just, like, like, lands, and there's this huge behemoth as the thorn elemental uh, springs to life. Other than that, you've got Serpa here. Uh, you've got... This would be uh, Millennia here, as she begins to take her true form. And then the Frost Hag over here. And the... Um, I don't know what to call this thing, but we'll call him the Druid of the Old Ways. The, the guy with the go ahead? Yep, the Godatar. So, with that... What's the talk? Um, Varric and, and Sundara, you're in... Where's the old one? The old one is at... The size of... Let's actually... Here, here, here. I'm missing one. Yeah, we are missing one. Yeah, where's my... Thanks, Farrick. <laughs> I'm just confused. I'm just kidding. So this, sorry, so yeah, this is Millennia, this is the old one. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Sundar. Yeah, as Varric pretty much runs on. <laughs> oh my god, that there's a plan. <laughs> um, I there. will <laughs> like no, a little was. bit. Yes, there was. I will activate my innate sorcery as a bonus action. Okay. And then I will cast mass suggestion. Oh, that was right. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, plan, guys. <laughs> I okay. forgot about that. <laughs> yep. How did everybody? We, it was like 40 minutes ago that we talked about this. So we well, give, give you that ring. Uh, uh, these are going to be at now advantage because we're in combat. Yeah. Um. Oh, I see. See, wow, guys, we could have had this. I'm not sorry. At <laughs> yeah. That's fine. 
that's a natural 20 for the Nightmare Hag. Which one's a the Nightmare Hag? A huge success for the Green Hag. Uh, what's your DC? 18. Frost Hag fails. Fails. There we go. <laughs> we got one. Uh, Nightmare Hag succeeds. We need at least two for this to have been worth mass of Josh. Serpa. It's not looking too good for you, buddy. Ooh, Serpa fails. Yes. There we go. What about the tree? Uh, three succeeds. What? And that's it. Surfer's dumber than a tree. God. Guys, we're so close to greatness. So close to greatness. Okay. So what? What are you suggesting? Um, I'll say that hey, now is not the time for violence. Throw down your arms, lay down, and take a rest. I would like to point out that they changed the wording of suggestion. It no longer has to be reasonable, just <sighs> achievable. Oh my god. Oh damn. Nice, Cass. Thank you. Cass. <laughs> All right. Um, I will say, like, as soon as... So here's how this is going to work. As soon as initiative starts... Here's what I'll do. I'll split the difference. Um, the frost hag is going to attempt to leave. She's just going to be completely uninterested in everything that's going on. Serpa is just going to, like, pop a squat, just being, like, disoriented with everything that's going on, and sit down as the melee ensues. As soon as people start getting hit, he's going to jump back in. So that's the, the compromise that I'm going to make here. That's not reasonable. Is that fair? What about the ice witch? She's leaving. Not okay. not to be confrontational. Why is there a compromise? So, from my understanding, they will absolutely rest and like sit there. But they're not going to watch all their companions die. So okay. basically, all you do is shut them down for a round. But because you used such a massive spell, and between all of us here, I actually added one more that would make this fight possibly unwinnable, I'm going to make one disappear. <laughs> okay. Um, so he's going to sit down? Yes. Oh, that's not good for him. Um, uh, so let me just make sure that okay. I understand. Are we? Is that the way the spell resolves? We're all okay with that? I mean, I'm... Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. No response. You passed priority. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, My, I do have a question about how the spell that I'm using works. Yeah. Um, do they all have to be within 30 feet of me when I start, or within 30 feet of each other once it goes? Uh, within you. They all have to be within 30 feet of you. So I can teleport to each one as long as when I start, it's at 30 feet. Yep. Okay. And then I do my standard melee damage. Uh, it's a plus 9, so I think that should be standard, unless you have some yeah. crazy bonuses. No, it's plus 9. I mean, for attack, it's plus 9. Yep. And for the damage that I do, it's, is that different? It's 6d10 for each person that you hit. And I guess the other thing I'll say is technically, this one here, you'll be able to hit her before she attempts to leave. But you'll have advantage on her and against a Serpa. Will she still attempt to leave even if I hit her? Because uh, technically, suggestion stops once you attack yeah. someone. So probably not. If she looks like she's her. leaving, I'm gonna leave her alone. Yeah. Like if, if, like I heard what she, what Sundara said. So if she's dipping, 
I, I will say that. that one looks, let's just say she looks particularly frail and she doesn't look like she could take a huge hit. Just don't hit her. It's a bait. It just it's further bait. wastes, it further wastes the mass suggestion. If you hit her and then she stays, then we're just like, you so have, screwed. Yeah. You, have, you have five targets, including the tree, and if you don't hit her, like, you still get five targets. I'm, yeah, I want to fucking dunk on the serpent. <laughs> okay. All right, so go ahead and roll, start with your attack on Serpa. Okay. And then roll I, the rest. I have advantage? You have advantage on that. I'm great weapon mastering. You can't. Why not? It's a, it's a it's spell. A, oh, it's a spell. You're not hitting with your Sorry, hand. sorry, sorry. sorry. Eighteen plus nine. That hits. Okay. Uh, do you want me to roll to hit everyone first? Then do roll for it? all the hits. Yeah. So this will be against the tree. Tree. Sixteen plus nine. Yep. Uh, one of the witches. That is uh, twenty-one total. That uh, hits. And the last witch. 23 total. Uh, you got one more. You got the goat fucker. The goat oh, goat boy. Sorry. Sorry, goat boy. That is um, an unnatural 20. Hits. Okay. So go ahead and just roll 60 10, and that'll be everyone, and then Serpa will take double that. Can Sandara have Seven. shimmied behind a tree for her movement? Yes. Seven, five, three, five, ten. How many is that? Did I do? Seven, five, three, Seven. five, ten. That's five. Is that all I do? Uh, it's sixty, ten. And six. Seven and three is ten and five and five is ten and ten, that's thirty-six. Right? Sounds right. Cool. Doubled for Serpa. That's Oh no, no it's not doubled for him, because you didn't crit. You just had advantage. Yes. Ooh, that would have been bad. Okay. Um on hitting Serpa, you take 30 points of cold damage. Yeah, yeah, I know. That is halved because you're Goliath. And the armor on him actually shatters. Nice. Okay, good. I got the fuck out of here. Nice. Okay. Uh, um, I, <laughs> that was like what killed me last time. Uh, we're gonna fucking action surge. I can find it here. And we're gonna fucking do the ring again. You're doing it, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is he still sitting down? Do I still have advantage? Yes, he is. To totally, totally cool if you break the ring. You know, wasn't that much work to go into it. But Too bad, I'm doing it. But, okay. Uh, that's the natural 20 on Serpa. Oh, well, hold on. Because all I was gonna say, hold on. Before you keep rolling, all I was gonna say is. If you want to do more damage to Serpa, you would probably do more full going in on him with your regular hits, and you might even get the bonus action and go Great Weapon Master. What do you mean get the bonus action? Because if you crit on him, you get a bonus action attack if you're swinging with your hammer. And you can go Great Weapon Master while preserving the ring. And the and you can always use the ring again later. True, good point. Serpa, Serpa. So hold on, so what are you doing? I'm gonna go great with the master on Serpa. So I'll say oh. I'm not gonna take away your natural twenty. The first hit can be a natural twenty. So you can go for your second hit and you have a third one as well. Are these all at advantage? Yes. He's sitting down. Cool. Fifteen and nine is twenty-four. Assume that hits. 
Uh, yes. Okay. And... 19 and 9. Should have brought the trident. Um, <laughs> so that's one crit... And I'm gonna add a um, divine smite. Oh, let me roll my two d six, four, and three is seven. I'm gonna turn into a dragon or something. And then two d eight. He's gonna have to use his reaction for a stone's endurance here. Oh, 2d8, uh, okay, so I have 7, plus 8, plus 7 is 14, 22, um, then we're going to use the superiority die for, um, I need to make a strength saving throw against a disarming attack. Um, he succeeds. Actually, that's only a 17. That's the DC. Okay. Um, so, what did I say? 22 plus 6 is 28. Plus, we're going to use a Strike of the Giant Stone Strike, which is another <laughs> D6. Old Johnny. Which is 30 points of damage doubled to 60. Plus 10. And Plus your modifier. 10. 75? Um. Yeah. Okay. Now do your other two attacks. Uh, 5 and 5 is 10. We'll throw on another superiority die. Um, uh, let's try the disarming attack again. Uh, weapon's gone. Plus eight. Oh no. I rolled the wrong die. Uh, plus two, which is twelve, plus another d6. Another two. It's Fourteen plus five. Nineteen for that. And then I just rolled three twos in a row on two different dice. So that is eleven. And that's three attacks. Okay. That was insane. Well, great weapon master though, right? It's a fighter, give me a fighter. Oh yeah, plus ten on twenty one. Yeah. Sorry. Alright. That sucked for me. Um You're shitting me, hold on. Did I kill him in one turn? Yeah, that can't be right. Please, 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 please. He's just a soft little boy. He's not so tough. He fucked me up last time, and if I could destroy him like this... I think the, I, the armor of Agathus is purely what fucked you up. Oh! Yeah. Yes, so the armor bag So that actually mitigated the damage. I forgot about those temporary hit points. Holy shit. Okay. Because otherwise, you, if it weren't for that, you literally, with his stone's endurance... Oh, and I forgot to add his uh, heavy armor masters, too. Okay, I, I made some math errors. But uh, if it weren't for my shitty math, you dealt... Um, I mean, you did just straight up deal, like, 30 points over his hit points, but he had damage mitigation. Uh, he's very fucked up, though. No more armor of Agathus, though, right? 
the armor of Agathus was gone. I will say I should have stoned endurance the first hit so I could keep it, but I didn't I won't give acknowledge you how much damage is going to be dealt to me, <laughs> and I didn't do that. Even though it technically wouldn't have mattered. Um, he's very hurt. Cool. Uh, is there anything else you're doing? I don't know. Well... You dealt 176 points of damage to Serpa alone this turn. I don't know if there's anything else I can do. I don't think there is. I think you've done enough. <laughs> well, I don't think that, but I don't think there's anything else I can do. Oof. Uh, I will let out a Goliath roar of pleasure. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you watch as Varric just straight up um, teleports hits everyone here, pretty much, lands in front of Circa, and then just, like, smashes him over the shoulder and chin, like, creating, a like, a crater in the snow beneath him that he's been pounded into. Then he just takes the hammer, and then just, like, like kind of the same way he killed Beaumont, just, like, lifts it up and smashes him in the chest as he tries to get up. With that, Serpa reaches forward, grabs Varric's, like, chest armor to pull himself up, Varric, you just slap his hand and his hammer out of his uh, hand, and then just, like, smack him again two more times. Um, Serpa is, like, clearly extremely hurt right now. Um, I assume you're not moving? Nah. Okay. That's gonna bring us to Millennia. She's going to move over here. Uh, she's gonna put a hand on Serpa. Collect this motherfucker. I'm a temporal shunter. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Remind me how this shit works. Uh, as soon as she begins, if I assume she's casting a spell. Yes. Uh, the revolver at my waist spins up and clicks a whole bunch and slows down. Uh, and she needs to make a wisdom 17. Probably gonna make that. Maybe not. Good I got an 18. Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, that saves. Nothing happens. That would have been bad. What well, would uh, it? <laughs> She, uh, unless someone stops her, she's going to get off this, uh, I don't even know what level spell this is actually. She made him tiny? She's touching Serpa, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm saving these for... Sixth level spell. Uh, she oh, is going to... shit! <laughs> I won't tell you what she's casting. It's a big spell that she's casting on him. Yeah. So, does it I'm... resolve? No. Yeah, it does. Um... Okay. I don't start battles with counterspell. I wait a little bit. <laughs> That's Sorry, fair. guys. He is going to cast a six level heal and he will regain 70 hit points. God damn Jesus it! Jesus Christ! <laughs> Should have countered it. <sighs> a six level is kind of hard to counter, especially with the new counterspell rules. Oh, yeah. What are the new rules? They have to make a constitution saving throw instead. I'm going to be. I'm gonna say this right now. We're going to use the old ones. <laughs> yes! I'm switching it! That, that, that's lame to me. Legacy, also, let's it, go. I think kind of unfairly buffs sorcerers as being harder to counterspell. Which I guess kind of makes which... sense, but... Still. Yeah. Um, we can touch basic again in the future, but right, I don't like it, so... We're not gonna... Yeah. Constitution is already really powerful, especially for casters, yeah. and I feel like that takes it too far. Um, okay. So he heals 70. She's looking much better. Sorry, James. Um, but that is her whole action. Uh, Wasted she's an action. Look at you menacingly. Uh, that is going to bring us to Serpa. Serpa is going to stand up, looking extremely. He's going to stand up. He is. I Not on my watch. Attack. Okay. You still have advantage. Is this straight open master? Oh yeah. GWP. Uh, 
Okay, 18 plus 9. I think we're in hitting range of that. I already used my reaction. Wait, no, no, I didn't. I get it back. 18 plus 9? Oh, because it's the start of your turn. Yes. I guess we can't do anything about that. 27. Ugh. Do I get to attack you or what? Yeah, yeah. What's, okay. the, what's the damage? Uh, well, we're also adding a, um, a D8 for the old, whatever you call it. And that's an 8, 7, and 8. It's 15, make a uh, strength saving throw, or get Bam. tricked. Or you're on the ground. Because that was a trip attack, you bitch. So as he goes to get up, you watch as Varric just Sparta kicks him back into the crater that he made, holds him there with his foot, place, like, places the hammer on it like golf swing style, and then just goes up and back down on his chest. Yeah, it's a uh, 15 plus 5 is 20 plus 10 is 30. Uh, you've dealt 160 something points. I know you've done a lot more than that. Oh, how many points did I deal? It's close to 206. He he resisted some of it, which is why he's up at all. But you dealt over 200 damage to him. In technically before <laughs> with one turn. Um. Okay. God. Just fuck this guy in particular. Um, yeah. He is yeah. going to then use his action to cast another spell. He's going to stack on another armor of Agathis. Um, he's going to use his bonus action to wild shape. Oh, no. I thought he used his action. Oh, never mind. You're right. A circle of the moon druid in wild shape as a bonus action. What is that? Uh, this is what the kids call an earth elemental. Oh, he's a big boy druid. <laughs> he is a big boy druid, which is why he's failing all his strength saves. Okay. That is going to bring us to... That's his whole turn. Um, yeah. He can, I'll say, so he can actually Earth Glide now. So uh, he used half his movement to try to get up, but he'll be able to Earth Glide to, we'll say, move over here, and he will not be prone anymore. Actually, he's going to leave that open. All right. That's it. On the fire? Nope. Um, that brings us to Cass. Oh, uh, what's really going on? Um, okay. Uh, where, which one am I? You're the one next to the, in all the light, in the spotlight. Oh, I am? No, no, no you're here. me. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh shit, it is... It is 1 o'clock. I didn't realize it was already 1 o'clock, so I have to leave. Um, so, I will cast greater invisibility on myself. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Call it. It is 1 o'clock. We've been at this for 4 hours. I will keep our, our place here, and we will begin with Cass, Cass's initiative and Reyna next week. Let's see what this plays out. Well, I don't got anything good to do, but... <laughs>